Distinguished panel.
if you have one for you and myself, then that's fine. That would be a lot of sense. <laughs> Good evening, welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting for Tuesday, April 5th, 2016. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, all my nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. This is the opening of the Board of Selectmen. We'll start the meeting tonight as we always do with a consent agenda. Um, residents are invited to share ideas, opinions, or ask questions regarding the town government. Is there anyone who would like to come up and speak on the consent agenda? Sure. Can we get the light back there? On the consent agenda or the public session? I'm sorry, I meant public oh, session. Okay. Sorry, I said consent agenda, I meant public session. Public sorry. session is what I meant. Hello? My name is Will Stearman of Wood v. Way. My family and I moved here about two years ago. I'm here to discuss the litter problem here in Hopkinton and how we are taking steps to fix it. While the coffee cups and plastic bags that line the streets are clearly visible as people drive, the real problem lies beyond the tree lines. It is there you'll find previous years of roadside trash that was plowed off the roadway or washed away with the rain. There are also numerous glass and plastic alcohol containers that were purposely thrown from vehicles into the trees to hide their consumption. In the past year, we have moved 107 33-gallon bags of trash, 33 tires, and four hypodermic needles, which is roughly equal to two tons of trash. Mind you, this massive amount is only from six roadways here in Hopkinton. With the vast majority of this trash being glass and plastic, it is not going anywhere anytime soon unless the force of nature or man moves it. And with Keep Hopkinton Beautiful, we hope to inspire people to replicate the ideas and cleanup activities already taking place across the country with over 500 Keep America Beautiful affiliates. The mission of Keep America Beautiful and more locally, Keep Massachusetts Beautiful is to empower residents, government, and business leaders to keep our communities clean and beautiful. Their focus is on three core pressure points in order to improve the appearance of local communities and influence behaviors. They are litter prevention and cleanup, beautification and community greening, and recycling and waste reduction. It is vital for all citizens to take personal responsibility for their homes, their streets, and their neighborhoods, and for this community to come together to support the residents and build greater community spirit and commitment. And please join us this Saturday on the town common starting at 8 as we kick off the first of many beautification events here in Hopkinton. And the cleanup, by the way, is the first step in Hopkinton becoming a Keep America Beautiful affiliate. Thank you. Thank you for coming in very much. Now, can, you, can you say again when it is? Uh, Saturday starting at 8 a.m. on the town common. We'll hand out trash bags. Yeah and have a meet and greet till 9. Okay. Then 9 and 12 will do cleanup activities. Great. What a great idea. Thank you very much for coming in tonight. Thank you. Okay, 9 to 12 on Saturday. 
Anybody else for a public forum? Okay. Seeing no takers, we're going to move on to the consent agenda now. It's a uh, number of action items. First is uh, minutes. The Board of Selectmen will consider accepting the following public session minutes, March 8, 2016, March 15, 2016. Second is parade permits. The Board of Selectmen will consider the following parade permits. The proponent is Atlanta Cassidy for Enter Stage Left's 5K Halloween Fun Run. Starts in the Hopkinton Center for the Arts and ends there as well on Saturday, October 30th, 2016 at 10.30 a.m. with no street closings. The third is a board appointment. Uh, the Board of Selectmen will consider affirming the town manager's appointment of Claire Wright as the town's representative to the Metropolitan Area Planning Council. Would anyone like to break any of those items up? Okay, see no takers. Chair, 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 Chair sorry, item three, please. Okay, break at item three. Any other, anything else? Okay, Chair, I'll a motion to approve items one and two in the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Motion second for a discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, present on the voting. That's unanimous. Mr. Her, item three. A little more background on item three through the chair to the town manager, please. Mr. Camalo. Um, as we know, the town's last formal representative the Metropolitan Area Planning Council, uh, I understand to be correct, it was uh, Mary Pat. And since then, um, we have had uh, informal representation by the town, uh, through the county staff. Uh, and the offer by Clear Right, um, I think, is a step in the right direction for the town, uh, given her experience and expertise working on land use and planning issues. Uh, and so I'm going to her name uh, uh, as the town's representative in the Metro Area Planning Council. Uh, this appointment is by the town manager. Uh, but per the town charter, I always run town manager appointments through the Board of Selectmen. <coughs> so in the past, was this a selectman duty, or was this a planning board member duty, or was this an appointment duty? It's an appointment. So no quali elected qualifications required or anything like that? Oftentimes we'd had selectmen do it, but then all of us, we, we get up to line. Through the chair, I think the last select person was Michelle Gates, maybe that was? I think that's right. We did it a while ago. Yeah. Yeah. And even she was off it for several years. Yeah, okay. All right, I'm good, thanks. Okay. Anybody else? Questions on this? Okay, Chair Lantana, a motion to approve. Uh, so moved. From the time manager's appointment of Claire Rise, the Times represent the MAPC. We have a motion and a second. Aye. Anticipatory. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, President voting. That's unanimous. Mr. Hurd trying to move this right along tonight. All right, next up, legislative visit. The Board of Selectmen will hear a legislative off from the offices of the uh, Senator Karen E. Spilka, who is unfortunately ill tonight, but represented by members of staff, and of course, Representative Carolyn Dykema, who is ubiquitous on budgetary and other legislative issues. <coughs> hey, welcome. Thank you for coming in. It is that time of year again, budget time. So um, great to be here, great to be here with um, Dennis Giabetti from the Senator's office. Uh, I know that Norman had a chance to speak with her this morning, as did I, and uh, I think it's probably a good thing that she stayed home to get some rest, because she really did not sound well. She has that virus that's going around. So uh, I have a brief legislative budget um, update, including budget highlights from the governor's budget, uh, as well as some legislative items that I think will be of interest to the town, and then some other uh, additional items, and then glad to take any questions afterward. So uh, the budget this year is, uh, the governor's budget was released several weeks ago, uh, mid-January, uh, to a total of $39.5 uh, billion, which uh, is indeed a large budget. But when you look at how those dollars are allocated, a quite a large percentage of it is uh, non-discretionary non -discretionary items, including debt service, uh, employee benefits, health care related costs. Um, so the actual um, discretionary portion of that budget is fairly um, constrained. Um, as, as a legislator for uh, Hopkinton and the other communities that I serve, obviously local aid and all of the funds that come to our local communities are, are a um, priority. So I just wanted to highlight where we are, at least in the governor's budget, with some of those items. The House will be taking up our budget um, the week after uh, April vacation week, which is the last week in April, and then the Senate follows 
in May. And I know many of you are familiar with this process, but generally as the updated budget numbers come in over time, uh, we hope to be able to add a little bit more to some of the um, governor's budget allocations. So Chapter 70, Education Aid, and in fact all the education items are always at the top of the list. Um, Chapter 70, Education Aid, is up 1.17% in the governor's budget to $6 million. Uh, unrestricted general government aid, which is, again, um, used for all town services, 755000 up 4.3% in the governor's budget. The special education circuit breaker uh, is level funded this year to a 73% reimbursement where it's been for a little while now. Um, senior uh, programs, always a priority to help um, fund our senior initiatives here in town, especially the senior center. One of the large contributors to that is what we call the senior uh, formula grant, which has been at $9 per senior citizen for several years now. It's level funded in the governor's budget, again, at $9 per uh, individual. We are hoping there's a, a legislative initiative to try and up that to $10 this year through the House budget process, but uh, at a minimum we'll know that it's at 9% uh, again this year. Our veterans, Chapter 115 uh, benefits, are fully funded in the governor's budget uh, as our lo local libraries level funding. And the kindergarten expansion grants, which I know are very important to the communities that get them, it's not every community that gets those, these expansion grants. Hoppington is one of the communities that does. And for those of you who may remember the last budget cycle, um, the administration had proposed to eliminate that uh, line item from the governor's budget and the legislature, uh, as well as a lot of the communities that received them, really pushed back hard to get that back into the budget last time. And we were thrilled to see that the governor, again, included it in his uh, budget coming into this year, which is great news. On the legislative highlights, the um, Chapter 90 transportation funds I have been approved, thankfully. Uh, I know it's something that communities look forward to, especially after snow that comes in April. We need to get those potholes fixed. Um, so the uh, allocation to Hopkinton for that uh, fund is $651,000 this year, which is great, level funding um, from uh, last year, I believe. One thing that um, isn't really uh, local aid oriented, but is something that has generated a lot of attention and frankly, frankly a lot of um, need and support here in the communities is opiate addiction. And I continue to be really uh, amazed and surprised at the depth of impact that this issue has on truly every one of the communities here in the Commonwealth, including right here in Hopkinton, um, you know, worked with a number of families that are, that are directly impacted. And if you don't have a direct family member who has been impacted, chances are very high that you have some impact indirectly. So really thrilled to join um, the governor, who really this was his first priority, uh, as it was the House and the Senate, to fast track an opiate bill uh, through the legislature that was signed just a couple of weeks ago by the governor. Some really great provisions in there around uh, constraining pills. As you may know, uh, pills are often where young people start using opiates. Um, they get addicted and then can move on to heroin. Uh, all of these products are incredibly damaging for young people and incredibly addictive and unfortunately very lethal. So being able to constrain in a thoughtful way uh, how many of those prescriptions are issued. Um, and in fact, there's also a provision in there that um, provides for a partial fill, which if you, know, if you want to do it in stages, if you don't think you'll need them, you can partial fill it. And some of the stories are really remarkable about the value of that provision. Um, there are stories about open houses where people are literally going into open houses, going through medicine cabinets and looking for opiates. That's kind of the level of concern that we've gotten to, and I think this bill goes a long way. I'm glad to provide some more detail on that um, if, if you're interested. Um, the Foundation Budget Review Commission, the Chapter 70 uh, aid formula allocation has been a an issue of debate for many years. The legislature last year um, in the budget required a commission to look at the uh, education aid formula, how it allocated funds to cities and towns to ensure uh, fairness, equity, and to determine whether it really met the needs, considering the formula itself is quite old um, and predated many of the needs that we have today. So there were three um, items or, or categories that were highlighted as a result of the commission review. Um, one was special education needs. Uh, the second was retiree benefits, and the third was uh, English as a second language, so English language learners. And there is a proposal, there are two bills that were filed as a result of that um, review, uh, all of which are sort of in uh, legislative process right now, but um, 
may potentially affect the community if we're able, especially to get some allocation for retiree benefits in the budget this year. Um, conference committee, there's, the conference committee has been very busy, as you know, um, House and Senate each vote separately on bills, and if there are significant differences between them, they go to conference. One bill that I know uh, is of interest to many on this board, but I know because I've gotten phone calls about it, is the solar uh, legislator, legislation and the net metering cap lift. Um, for those of you uh, maybe watching today, the um, cap on solar energy has been significantly constraining to the growth of that industry, which is really providing not only a lot of clean power, but a lot of jobs here in Massachusetts. So um, I and a lot of my colleagues have been pushing to raise that cap. And I got some great news actually about two hours ago that the House is going to be taking up that legislation tomorrow, um, lifting the cap to 3% to hopefully uh, allow some of those uh, jobs and those projects to continue, which is great news. Um, public records reform is also in conference committee. There's been a lot of interest on the part of the public, obviously, for disclosure and availability of public records, both at the state level and at the municipal level. And um, the conference committee and now is trying to pull together some provisions that will uh, work and make sense for cities and towns as well. Other items of interest, the um, Secretary of Veterans Services, Francisco Urena, came out to Holliston to meet with our um, regional veteran service officer who also serves the community of Hawkington. And we had a great meeting about um, employee or um, <coughs> employment for veterans, as you know, um, coming back from service, uh, re-entering the, the um, workforce is challenging for many of our veterans, very high level of unemployment lot of activity um, from the administration on trying to remedy that, which is great news um, and great to have him out and just um, paying attention to us here in Metro West, which we love. The Housing Authority have been working fairly extensively with the Hopkinton Housing Authority, who um, has contractually um, combined now with Westboro Housing Authority, and there were some contract issues there that we're working through with DHCD that we're hoping to have resolved in fairly short order, but just wanted to let you know that's uh, in process. Uh, transportation is always a, a hot topic here, whether it be tolls or um, Chapter 90 funds, um, commuter rail. The commuter rail schedules are now a big issue for us. Um, we have a legislative caucus in the legislature made up of Metro West um, legislators in both the House and the Senate, and we really focus on issues of regional importance, and most often they are transportation-related issues. And I wanted to highlight one of them, which is the I-495 Mass Pike Interchange Project. For anyone who um, travels 495 uh, north in the morning or south in the evening knows the constraints around getting off of 495 and onto the pike and vice versa. We've been pushing for probably three or four years now for MassDOT to prioritize um, that interchange project and an interchange expansion project uh, onto the state list of priority projects. Um, we had a little bit of a scare. We've made some great progress. Congressman McGovern, when he represented uh, Hopkinton, got an earmark to do some initial planning and studies, which were great. We had pushed the project forward, and it was in jeopardy of dropping off the priority list uh, earlier this year because of uh, a reprioritization. And it was great to have the support of not only the Hopkinton community, Westboro, as well as all the legislative delegation to get that, thankfully, back on the short list of projects which is great news not only for our residents, for quality of life, but also for um, local businesses who we were hearing um, from all the time about how the traffic constraints uh, in that area were really impacting their ability to grow, to get their employees there on time. So it truly is a project of regional significance for us. Uh, we will have to continue to be vigilant, but it's definitely a good news story for now, which uh, we love those good news stories. And uh, lastly, just wanted to highlight that we are meeting with, I believe, someone from the Board of Selectmen, Norman, as well as the Median um, Redesign Committee down by 495 on West Main Street just to do a regroup with MassDOT. I think there's been a great um, cooperation and collaboration there between the state and the community, and we're just going to be bringing folks back to the table again before the construction actually starts to make sure that everyone is on the same page and everything goes smoothly. So on that note, I will turn it over briefly to um, to Dennis and then I'm glad to take questions. Thanks, Colin. Thank you, Representative. She really hit all the highlights. Uh, 
uh, the budget, but I just wanted to first send uh, regrets to the Senator for not being able to be here this evening. She really wanted to come to kind of discuss some of the initiatives that she's working on. You can imagine as the uh, chair of the Senate Ways and Means, she spends most of her time trying to develop the budget for this year uh, as she meets with her colleagues as well as she hears from her constituents and otherwise. So if there's anything that, that you uh, want to uh, introduce to her about uh, some of the things that you're experiencing, whether it be circuit breaker, whether it be uh, local aid and so forth, please express uh, your uh, interest in where you think the, the areas are that you want her to uh, continue uh, to work on. Uh, just to follow up on one of the comments the representative made on the opiate uh, crisis, um, Hopkinton, as you know, received $100,000 for the HOP, which is the Hopkinton Organization for Prevention, and they've been meeting in under uh, the town manager um, and have been doing some great job, and I think they, uh, the use of that $100,000 of, of dollars that the legislature gave really went a long way uh, to kind of address some of the issues uh, in Hopkinton. Um, and other than that, I think uh, the representative hit uh, most of the uh, major highlights, um, and we're here to answer any questions. Thanks very much. Thank you. Mr. Catino, you want to start? No <clears throat> sure. I just, I just have one. Um, as the, the, with the interchange uh, coming down and changing all that and, and all the gantries going up, so that means that the uh, pike tolls are never going to go away, obviously. But one of the things that, that concerns me is that um, the, the tolls will now be calculated by the distance you go between the gantries. And I just, want, I just hope that, that you and, and the Senator could uh, make sure that there is a stringent process so that they don't they they can't streamline the any any toll hikes and because nobody's going to notice them now they're just going to hit the uh, transponders and then hit people's uh, uh, credit cards or bank accounts and um, it's just a, a more stealthy way of of uh, gaining revenue so I just want to hope that that you guys will protect us up out here in, in the Hopkinton area thanks John and that's definitely something we've been paying attention to in fact we just got a briefing the other day on. Um, the all electronic tolling and the rollout. You probably noticed the two new gantries um, that are up on the pike in this vicinity. Um, one is in Weston, which you see on the way in, and one is in Southboro. So they have, um, MassDOT has said that it is um, sort of revenue neutral approach. We're watching carefully to see how that revenue, though, is reallocated over the different, <coughs> you know, milestones because that will clearly affect uh, different regions differently. And I know the Senator and I will continue to talk about and beat the drum for toll equity because that's really been something, um, you know, clearly we appreciate the fact that, you know, roads, all the roads are paid for out of one pot of money and then we pay extra when we pay the tolls. And there needs to be some equity to that. Um, I agree that um, with the recent, there was a triennial review of the state of the roadway. The original legislation um, said that if the road were in a state of good repair by 2017, the tolls would go away. They just came out with the state of good repair report, and it in fact is not in a state of good repair. So it okay. does, um, while the final call has not been made yet, it, uh, it seems to me anyway that the writing is probably on the wall and those tolls are there. However, we are organizing as a caucus to um, reach out to the federal government around um, toll expansion because we um, had, uh, our caucus had a, um, an outside section added to the budget a couple years ago to do a study of what it would look like to expand tolls to other major roadways across the state to have a more consistent approach that if tolls are good for us, they should be good, you know, as a funding mechanism for many others as well. So we are in the process of working with the secretary. There's a pilot, a federal pilot program um, and it sounds like at least one of the participants in that program may be dropping out in another state, and we would like to occupy that pilot opportunity to see what we can do to move the ball forward on the toll equity question. So definitely appreciate your concerns. Thank you so much. That's great. Mr. Sestari. I was going to try to, first of all, welcome. <laughs> nice to see you both. Thanks, Doc. It's been a while. Um, I was going to try not to mention anything on this, but uh, the topic of transportation came up. And in the last couple of days, I've been looking at the MBTA budget. And I have to say that between the level of service that they offer and then actually looking at a budget where they have uh, operating expenses of about $750 million, operating income of $720 million, and then debt service of around another um, $1.5 billion, um, it, it's... It's, excuse me, with the debt service, they come in at around $1.5 um, And then they, 
and then they show a net profit at the bottom. Actually, they show, they show that they're operating 80 million in the red, but then there's some line additional assistance, which I'm sure is tax money coming from somewhere. And then they're operating at a net profit of 106 million per year. Um, I take the commuter rail occasionally going into work. And on days where there are snowstorms, it's a difficult decision. Do I want to sit on a train and wait just because of bad tracks or signals and things like that? Or do I want to get on the Mass Pike and wait in traffic there? Uh, I talk to people who are coming in on trains from different directions coming into the city. And for the most part, everybody has a similar experience. People getting on trains with no lighting and their feet are just in puddles and there's no heat in the middle of winter and things like that. And people are paying good money for this service. Um, and, you know, and, and it's just appalling that we have such an incredible budget for this and the service level is so poor. Uh, I know that it's in the press and people are talking about how they need to improve it. I hope that over the next you know, year or two, things do improve. Um, because right now, I think our public transportation system is a little bit of an embarrassment. I agree. I'm sure we, I think we all have something to say about that. I'll just say that, um, so there's a new contract that went out about a year ago um, for maintenance of the, or management of the, the commuter rail specifically, which is separately maintained by a contractor, because there were a lot of issues around incentives that were provided for on-time service and things like that. They weren't structured the way that they should have been. Uh, I think that the new contract, in my view, and we meet with them on a regular basis to kind of get updates on the on-time level of service. Level of service, while not where it needs to be, I believe has been consistently better than it was under the former management, which is good news. Um, there were new engines that were ordered. One of the challenges has been that the we have underinvested in a lot of the capital. Um, you know, we've been paying for a lot of it on credit cards, and we've been pushing off maintenance, and maintenance hasn't been done. The new engines haven't been purchased. They finally were purchased. Um, there was a problem with some of them. They had to be sent back to be redone. Needless to say, I think we're on the right track with the new management and with some of the investments that we've made. Um, we've got a long way to, do, to go. There's no question. Um, you know, we've still got the, the constraints with weather. One of the things that we heard over the summertime is that um, heat... Um, because the heat, the tracks would sort of buckle, and so you would have to slow down the trains to accommodate this buckling. If you'd notice, anyone who's driving on the pike, you see them now putting um, the new, they're, they're tacking down the lines so that there should be no heat restrictions once they're done. I believe they've made it all the way into Boston in the eastbound direction. They're on their way back now toward Worcester in the westbound direction. So um, they have assured us that this summer there, there should be no heat restrictions, which is you know, at least a step in the right direction. So I guess I'll say I think it's commonly known that there needs to be more investment in transportation infrastructure overall. Um, what we will be advocating for is as that revenue comes, hopefully, from somewhere, and that's going to be very much a public debate, not a, not a legislative debate necessarily, we'll be advocating to make sure that it goes to those services that are benefiting our districts. And I know the commuter rail is a lifeline for us here, not only for folks leaving from here going into Boston for our businesses like EMC uh, now Dell tells us you know the, the folks we want to hire our young talent wants to live in Boston they don't want to have cars they want to live in apartments in the city we need to get them out here in the morning and there's woefully inadequate reverse commute schedules coming in from Boston those need to be added so there's a whole range of things that need to be done I guess I will I will empathize with you Todd and, and completely agree that we have a distance to go and we'll keep working on it yeah, I mean, I just, uh, you highlight all of the bad things uh, about the system, and, and, uh, but I think uh, as representatives, there are some good things, uh, and is the, uh, the focus. I mean, last winter we had a terrible winter, uh, and the good part of that was that it brought focus to the, to the, uh, the shape of uh, the T system. Um, and I think the uh, reorganization uh, that have taken place to the physical control board has really kind of done some deep dives into the, not only the finances of it, but the operations of it. So there is a glimmer of hope, I think, that uh, that uh, structure now will, will um, be able to address some of the fundamental problems that have been going on for, for decades. 
so I think there's some hope in that, uh, but it's still a wait and see. And I think the legislative delegation is doing the same thing, looking and, and trying to help as much as we possibly can to give them the support that they need to kind of uh, fix it. I'll be honest, when I, when I uh, have seen what's happened over the last couple of years, and as you said, the focus that's uh, come to the actual state, it actually inspires me a bit as I'm going through our budget and we talk about pushing off repairs and things like that. Uh, you know, it, it may sound a bit demented, but I look at this and <clears> say, <throat> okay, this is the kind of thing that can happen if we, want, if we keep pushing things off too far. So. Well, it's probably because they're paying so much in pension benefits and everything else for everybody. Well, that's, yeah, that's the money, another The point. choice has you been know, to spend get, it on operating budgets. You get the newspaper articles budgets. that uh, uh, highlight people who equivalently gross, have worked gross uh, 90 hours a week for yeah. three years straight. And Grossly mismanaged. <laughs> so, anything else? No, I'm all set. Thank you. Mr. Mosier. I want to thank both you and Senator Spilka for the amount of time uh, you've made yourselves available for Hopkinton's concerns. Um, you're very thorough in your updates, so I don't have a lot of questions. I guess the only thing is just... Uh, is that a euphemism for long, John? <laughs> <laughs> no. Just maybe briefly, um, what's going on with public records reform? I know you've supported it in the past, but you've been adamant it has to be a practical method to execute it. Just what's going on with that? Well, like I said earlier, it's, it's in conference committee and the Mass Municipal Association, which is really representing cities and towns to make sure that whatever comes forward is practically implementable um, in a streamlined way for municipalities. There's a lot of that negotiation, you know, still going on. Um, that feedback is still being added into the process. So I don't know what will come out, quite frankly. Um, obviously, it will be a step in the right direction in terms of opening up access to public, public records, but a lot of the detail, um, we'll just wait and see when that gets released, hopefully soon. All right. Thank you. The most egregious one I heard of those was actually the state police who are charging like hundreds of thousands of dollars for reports. Are they covered by all this as well? There was some notorious yeah, thing a few years ago when somebody tried, to get a, somebody tried to get a public record and they wanted like a quarter million dollars for it. Like, so it was, it was, it was absurd. Are they covered by all these? Uh, all these I don't numbers? know that off the top of my head. I, I don't know. I, I can get you that answer. Yeah. Well, I, if they're not, they, I think they need yeah. to be because I, I remember them as being a, a severe outlier a, a, a couple of years back. I mean, if they're public records, they're public records and they should be covered. Yeah, but, you know, they were the ones charging like $100 a page, yeah, right. you know, and, all, and for the research and everything. So, okay. Mr. Herr. So in keeping with the transportation conversation a little bit, um, both Senator Spilka and Representative Dykema have been very supportive of the Metro West Regional Transit Authority. Uh, I sit on that board as well uh, as the representative from Hopkinton. Uh, we recently had a meeting uh, with Mr. Kamalo and folks from the Senior Center. Uh, I don't think we had uh, anyone from the offices, the legislative offices in attendance, but Mr. Carr and all of us sat down and we had a great meeting and we're going to continue to work to expand the public transportation service using MWRTA, uh, getting deeper into Hopkinton. Uh, the legacy farms development, for example, is bringing a lot of new residents to town, uh, and with those residents comes additional needs for public transportation. We talked about that extensively. We're going to get another bus, like you helped us get a bus before, uh, for the senior center. So there's a lot going on there, and uh, just be aware of that. So uh, we appreciate your support, and we're going to ask for more going forward. Great. The uh, does a great job. Secondly, just back to the numbers, if we could, for a minute. So you talked about general aid, I think, a 4.3% increase. Uh, yes. Well, there was another one that was a slight increase. Are those the numbers through the manager to the, the, through the chair of the town manager? Are those the numbers we included in our revenue stream for the budget so far? Or are those new? These are the numbers that we have now adjusted our projections based on. And does appropriations have those? Because those slight bumps would address some of that concern we had about us going over the two and a half. You know what I mean? Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Great. Good. Thank you all for coming in. Thank it's you. It's been very nice to have you here. And as you can see, we've got a whole <coughs> crowd of Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts here. So we, we, we will stay right for the Scouts. Are you going to stay for the <laughs> yes, fun part? Great. All right. Good. Thank so you. We'll, you. we'll welcome you there for that. Okay, so we're moving on to the uh, tonight's highlight, which it always is, and um, at some level we're victims of our own success here because we've got a large group here in front of us tonight. So um, the uh, Board of Selectmen is going to issue a group, uh, a large number of proclamations to new Eagle Scouts and Gold Star Scouts um, in town. 
So the, uh, the item to be addressed here is uh, a series of proclamations. The Board of Selectmen will, will issue proclamations for the following Eagle Scouts of Troop 1, Liam Bosconi, Jack Dion, and Roderick Landreth. The second item is the Board of Selectmen will issue proclamations for the following Eagle Scouts of Troop 4, Connor Murchie, Michael McCabe, and Daniel Paleko. And then the third is the Board of Selectmen will issue proclamations for the following Girl Scouts receiving gold awards of Troop 73798, Julia Aldman, and Emma Dion. So uh, I think because we have such a large group tonight, what we'll do is I think we'll just go through with everybody and we'll, we'll invite you all up. We'd like to have you come up, introduce yourselves, talk a little bit about your experience and what you did. Maybe the board can ask a few questions. And then I think at the end we'll, um, we'll hand out a series of proclamations and, uh, uh, and take some pictures, hopefully. So can I get a motion from the board to approve the proclamations before we go forward? So moved. Motion. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, good. So the paperwork's done. So Margie, you're here to talk about your... Troop I'm just going to, I'd like to introduce, I'm the Eagle Advisor for Troop 1, Margie okay. Wigan, and I'd like to introduce Liam Busconi, Jack Dion, and Eric Landreth, okay. who uh, are from Troop 1 and all got their Eagle Scout Great. Awards. All right, so guys, why don't you all come up one at a time, any, any order you like, and um, introduce yourselves. Liam, hey, man. So welcome. So tell us, tell us who you are and what you're here for, and, and we'll, we'll go to the board for some questions. Okay. Um, my name is Liam Bisconi. I've been part of Troop 1 uh, my entire career of scouting. And basically, the whole goal of scouting is to not only learn from experiences, but ultimately achieve the rank of Eagle. So, okay. accomplish that. You want to tell us about your project? Yes. Um, I built a grotto for St. John's Church in, um, in memorial to Our Lady of Grace and the Virgin Mary. And it not only symbolizes a place of worship for the church, but it also is a place of kind of peace and reflection for the community. Okay. Anybody got any questions for Liam? Who wants to start? Anyone? Mr. Katina, you want to go ahead? Yeah, I'll start. I, I, it's, it's funny. I, I remember you in, in kindergarten with my daughter, and it's just, it's just these guys all Tell me one of those nights. It's, uh, <laughs> it's just amazing. Um, you know, it, what a beautiful grotto you did uh, across the street for the church. I watched you build it and everything else. And these are the, you guys were all going to get the same questions. What was your toughest, toughest thing? How'd you organize everything? So start thinking about that stuff. Who, who do you, who, yeah, so... Um, but anyway, so you know, how many people did you have helping you, and, and what was your, you know, some of your toughest uh, aspects? So around uh, 25 to 30 people helping me. I mean, not all at once, but different phases of the project. I started off uh, alone, you know, trying to find Mason and architect willing to help me build this. And then the hardest part of the project was probably finding a Mason willing to work with kids and scouts. A lot of the Masons like to do all the work on their own and finish it kind of fast because it is something they're getting paid to do and they want to do a lot of it. And also because of the fact it was close to winter time, they wanted to get it in before this first snow or first fr frost. Um, so once I found a Mason that was willing to help me out, I was really smooth sailing from there. I was done a lot of physical labor. Good. Mr. Moji, you got any questions? Uh, just, I guess, just the biggest challenge. Biggest challenge was uh, digging a four by six by four foot hole in the uh, ground. By hand. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you dug a hole, that is a miracle. Yeah. Wow. Or like chipped your way through it. Uh, uh, it was digging from like the first foot, and then uh, it was chipping it through. Like you didn't rest. hit the septic system. Yeah, well, that's, that's impressive. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. It's a great project. Very worthy. <laughs> great project. I wondered who did Mrs. it. Mrs. Sestari, any questions? Liam, is there anybody you'd like to thank for materials or their help, anything like that? Uh, first off, I'd like to thank my parents for helping me out uh, through thick and thin and kind of pushing me through it. Uh, but also, um, I had three people, uh, three companies that helped me out the most. Um, and then also, uh, Paul Capalusi was my mason who helped me out and helped me finish the whole thing and get me on the right track and taught me how to do everything that I needed to do for the grotto work. Mr. Catino's a mason, but he's a different kind of mason. So any help. <laughs> Don't but, get him uh, going. Uh, you know, I, I, I kind of bring out this fact because it was new to me when I got on the board. Only about 5% of uh, scouts actually achieve uh, Eagle Scout. And the number of scouts that we have come through, uh, through this room who have achieved Eagle Scout is incredibly impressive. And I think it's a testament, obviously, to the youth in the community 
their parents, the scout leaders, and uh, we're, we're all very proud of you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Mr. Hart, questions? No questions. I think you guys have asked all the questions. Thank you. I'm just always impressed with how our scouts stand at that podium <clears throat> and speak to the audience, speak to us, speak to the, to the town, speak to the camera, uh, and how well you do in your presentation. I mean, would you, you're following a state representative and a state senator's uh, chief of staff to the podium. And you stand there like you're a state representative or a state senator. So I'm very impressed uh, with your presentation. I love seeing all those badges there on your sash, and congratulations. Thank you very much. Well done. Liam, all right. Well, you're a great young man from a fabulous family who's, I think, operated, whose father's operated, I think, on most of us in this behind this table. <laughs> so, so we're super happy to see you here tonight, Thank and you. congratulations. So we'll, we'll, actually, we'll do proclamations and pictures in a bit. Yeah. So, okay. Great job. Who's next, Jack or Rod? Next call from Troop 1 is Jack Dion. Okay. Jack, come on up. So good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm Jack Dion. Uh, my project was a picnic area at the Hawkenden State Park. Um, so about um, October of 2014, um, I started my project there. It is the E-Lot picnic area. Uh, if you're down by the um, boat ramps and you continue up the access road, it'll be the first picnic area on your right. Um, so that's the project site. Uh, there was an original picnic area there. Uh, it was too far back in the woods, and people were partying and misusing the area. So um, Mr. Trubiano at the uh, DCR asked me to pull that site out of the woods and install a brand new picnic facility um, close to the road so that he can monitor it from the access road, um, which makes his job easier. Uh, so uh, I think it was October 4th we started the project um, clearing about a, I'd say, a 50-foot by... Uh, maybe 50 foot area. So it was a pretty big area. We had to clear all the vegetation, um, some small trees, uh, stuff like that. So that took about uh, a couple weeks and then after that we um, waited until the spring because when the snow was falling, it was quite a winter, um, we couldn't get much done on the ground. So uh, back in the spring, started up work again and uh, got um, some wood chips donated very kindly by McIntyre Loam uh, and the Serenity House. So they had um, some wood chips left over from some cleanup work, so they gave it to us. And we spread about 25 yards of wood chips over the area, installed five picnic tables and company and grills, and uh, built a nice little stone wall along one side of the picnic facility. So that was the project. We finished May 11th. That's awesome. Mr. Herr. DCR. So you interacted with a state agency. Yes. You have a state representative here, state senator uh, representative here as well. How was it interacting with DCR? It's fantastic. Mr. Trubiano is a great guy. Um, he helped a lot and couldn't ask for anything more. So. Did you seek the project out through DCR, or did they come to you and ask the scouts to try and work on this? Um, I uh, sought out the project. Uh, I was calling around a little bit, and um, I knew a lot of other scouts were using HALT. I gave the call to halt. Uh, Mr. Trubiano sent me an email back first, so uh, he had said he had a great project set up and just went with that. So. That's great. Excellent project. Thank you very much for your contribution. Oh, thank you. Mr. Mosier. I really don't have any questions, just sort of general statement that um, I frequent trails and outdoor places and that sort of thing. And I'm, I think almost every time I've been out in the past year, I've come across one of these projects, whether it's mm -hmm. a bridge or a picnic table or a bench. And, and so these aren't just one-off projects. These, these have a widespread benefit to the entire community. And I want to thank you for your efforts. Thank you. Awesome. Mr. Uh, Catino. Yeah, um, so anybody else that you want to thank? Uh, you, you mentioned uh, McIntyre. Anybody else? Uh, just McIntyre and um, Mr. Trubiano. That was all the um, people we really had to work with. The park supplied all the grills, picnic tables, everything. So. It was a great situation. Great, thank you. And Mr. Sistari. You know, when you said you had to wait till spring, I'm not sure if you mean this past February or if you're still waiting. <laughs> no. <laughs> but uh, great yep, work. It's all done. Um, any any uh, particular challenges you came came across? Um, just clearing the area. Clearing it was, the uh, area. It's quite an undertaking, so okay. it's a big job. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Jack, great job getting through. Thanks again for coming in.
Okay, the next call from Troop One is Eric Landreth. Hi, Eric, I'm Eric. Eric. <laughs> Uh, as Jack mentioned, uh, we do approach halts, and uh, so I asked uh, Huffington Area Land Trust if they had any, uh, if they were in need of any projects done, and they recently acquired a new piece of land. Uh, my project called Deneen Phase Two, uh, on the intersection of Deneen and Scarlata, uh, past Price Chopper. Um, they needed a trail uh, restored, a new trail board. Uh, to the road so it has easy access and then the trail made safe so it could be used uh, from uh, whether it's just people walking the dogs or taking a run on the trail. Fabulous. Okay. Uh, Mr. Sistari. Uh, what kind of help did you get from uh, various vendors or anything like that that you'd like to thank? Uh, Hoppington, uh, sorry, uh, <coughs> Hoppington Lumber uh, helped um, a lot with the wood for the bridge to finish off my project to uh, uh, replace an unsafe uh, intersection of what was just a heap of logs that were slippery and would uh, freeze and clog the trail. Um, I would like to uh, thank David Goldman from HALT uh, for knowing, uh, for being on top of what had to be done and for being able to uh, provide assistance in the tasks. And uh, I'd also like to thank my Eagle Advisor, Ms. Wigan. About what length of trail did you, uh, did you cover? Um, let's see. From the old trail to the road, it was about a, mm, say, 200, 250 foot uh, length that we had to go through, uh, being careful to avoid any uh, uh, big natural growth so that we could uh, preserve the forest as good as, good as possible, because that's uh, pretty much the point of the trail. Um, then the restoration of the old trail, uh, which was almost non-existent at that point, was another maybe uh, 200, 300 feet back to met a trail that uh, went uh, parallel to the water, um, right across from Sandy Beach, actually. And uh, that was where the bridge started. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Mosher. Uh, I'm not familiar with this trail, so where is, that, where is it exactly? <laughs> uh, it's a semi-new uh, Let's see, semi new neighborhood of, um, on the intersection of Scarlata and Deneen, which is, uh, let's see, mm. well, just past Price Chopper on the left. <laughs> okay. Oh, All right. the west side. It's on the west side of the lake, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go Off check it out. <laughs> right. John will be running there in a morning. He found one he hasn't gone to yet. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So you mentioned we. So was it you alone doing this work, or did you organize a group of people? Um, I had help from friends, family, and people in the troop. Uh, about 20 people overall uh, donating their time to uh, make this become reality. And you had to coordinate their activities and get, get them to work together and stuff like that. How did you find that management process? Um, it was a handful of times. <laughs> Welcome to management. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. So for all the scouts, this will go on your resume forever. And employers, college applications, you name it, will be looking at that and saying, wow, because you have management experience and you took initiative and you did something different and you built the bridge and you built the thing. It's saying, you, all these things that all the scouts are doing, it will be on your resume forever and you should be enormously proud of that. And uh, you'll remember this Eagle Scout project for the rest of your life. Great job. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'll just, <clears throat> I'll just finish up with the way Mr. Hurd spoke about it before. You know, your, your presence up there, the way that you're, you're, you're giving the presentation and with the confidence and everything else, it's just wonderful. You've, uh, you're, you're, you're a great scout. Thank you very much. Thank you. Eric, thanks for coming up. Okay, we're going to switch over to Troop 4 now. Are you going to call Bob and do the intros? This is a high water mark for us in terms of the numbers. As I said, we're victims of wrong success here. Yeah, we've never had eight this before. Is very, very hey. ama this is amazing. Good evening. My name is Bob Murchie. I'm the assistant scoutmaster of Troop 4. And the first scout that I'm going to introduce to you is Connor Murchie. Uh, good evening. Hi, hey, Connor. I'm Connor Murchie. Uh, my ego project was a prayer garden. Uh, in the St. John's Cemetery. Um, it has uh, flowers in the statue and a bench um, that were all new and 
donated from McIntyre, and some was purchased from uh, um, Landscape Depot. Um, yeah, that was help from uh, Mr. Baker uh, from Baker Landscaping helped me um, figure out where to put many of the flowers and um, how to install much of the um, equipment. And um, Western Nurseries, um, I bought my flowers from Western Nurseries. We had a variety of durable flowers that we purchased there. Uh, yeah. Great project, Connor. It's really Mr. Hurry, got any questions, Tart? Tom McIntyre, right, from McIntyre Loan. Was he an Eagle Scout? Don't know. You know if he was an Eagle Scout at all? No. He has donated so much stuff to the town of Hopkinton over the years through the Eagle Scout programs and the Gold Star and all the other programs in town. He's incredibly generous to the town of Hopkinton. Except for you're fortunate to have sort of saddled up with him to help you out with your project. So you had to coordinate a bunch of people and suppliers as well to get your project done? Uh, yeah, so I reached out to McIntyre Loom to get uh, loom and gravel. And then I reached out to uh, the Archdiocese to get a, a statue. Um, and I reached out to Landscape Depot to acquire a, uh, a big stone to put the statue on, uh, the bench and the stepping stones, and uh, reached out to Western Nurseries to get the flowers. So when you made the ask of McIntyre Loam, how did that feel when you were making that call and making the ask? Uh, it was a bit, I was a bit nervous yeah. um, because I'm... Uh, just talking to someone new. Yeah. Um, but after a while, it got uh, a lot more easy, and I was calling him a lot to ask for help and uh, how much stuff I would need and stuff like that. And uh, after my first call, which was the Archdiocese, all the calls got easier, not just to um, the Archdiocese, but to all the people that I had to reach out to for help uh, across the project. There's a great example. You know, he was nervous to make that first call. Very common in life to be nervous about something, then you get to do it a few times, you get used to it. So a great lesson and a great project. Thank you very much. Great. Uh, Mr. Sister? Connor, uh, it sounds like a great project. Uh, thank you very much. I know that you've worked hard, not just in the last year, but over the last several years to get where you are. And I think to Mr. Herr's point, you know, that first phone call is a difficult call to make, but I think... I'm hoping that one of the lessons that you've learned through this is that, for the most part, people around you want to help. You just have to ask. And, uh, you know, I think that, especially in this community, uh, you know, there are a lot of, a lot of good salt-of-the-earth people who, who want to help each other out. And uh, it's good that you found that out. And just, you know, keep that, keep that as you keep going through life. And don't be afraid to ask. Congratulations. Ms. Catino. Do you to the budget? <clears throat> Um, these, these well, you make an initial budget when you make it, essentially. So um, mine was, and then you have to fundraise to get to that number. Mm -hmm. So I raised around $1,200, and I spent $60 under budget. Um, so, uh, Mr. Catino likes that. Yeah. <laughs> Not as much as Mr. Herr, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. What did you do for, for your fundraising? Um, I asked a lot of friends and family, and um, I hosted the coffee hour at St. John's Church, um, asking for donations there. So. Another great lesson. Right? A lot of coffee. Mr. Mosher. Connor, nice job on your accomplishment. Aside from the uh, the challenge of making that first phone call, what was your biggest challenge associated with the project? So we had to dig the hole um, to put the gravel in, yeah. and that was uh, hard because it was already getting cold. So the um, earth had kind of gotten hard, so we had to, uh, it was 18 inches deep, four and a half feet uh, each side, and it took a while. That was the majority of our first day was digging that big hole and then filling that in with gravel after that. Um, and then you had to compress it down, but that was definitely the hardest part. 
great. Thank you. Nice job. Thank you. Kind of good stuff. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Bob, before you do it, I, we got to take a quick commercial break here. I got to open a public hearing. So we'll come right back to this. But uh, the item six in the agenda is 745. As opposed to public hearing, is street acceptance. The Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing to consider accepting the following streets recommended by the Planning Board as public ways Colling Hill Road, Valleywood Road, Nancy Lane, Carol Ann Drive, and Carrie Lynn. Can I get a so motion moved. to open the, the uh, second, second. hearing? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Hearing's open. Chair's going to continue the meeting. Bob, you can go. The uh, next scout I'd like to introduce is Michael McCabe. Um, hello, I'm Michael McCabe, and I'm a Eagle Scout from True Four. And my project was to was the refurbishment of a prayer garden at St. at St. Matthew's Church in Southboro. And so what I did is I installed a new P-stone walkway, leading to the stat, leading to a statue of at the uh, prayer garden, and. It was I replaced an old asphalt walkway that was old, old and uh, broken down, and then I planted a mulch bed around it and planted flowers and shrubs donated from uh, South Pro Tree and Shrubs, and I got the mulch from McIntyre Loam and the cobblestone from Weston Nurseries. Michael, so what, tell us what grade are you in? Michael comes from a hard charging group of fa a family of Boy Scouts. I'm in ninth grade. Yeah, so <laughs> Michael's a freshman. Ninth and Connor, grade. Connor too, right? Connor. Yeah, so these guys are these guys are these guys are hard chargers. So, <laughs> Mr. Marsh, any questions for Michael? I'm hearing a lot of landscaping projects here. Uh, did your parents put you to work landscaping once you picked cool. up new <laughs> skills? You doing that? Um, not yet. No. Okay. So the demolition on the asphalt walkway was probably a lot of fun, huh? Yeah. Um, my dad actually uh, helped with a uh, got a small sledgehammer. It was it was rather old. So um, and we um. Uh, Hammered out. It was a lot of cracks, so we were able to hammer it out um, fairly easily and replace it. And then a uh, work. And so the walkways I attached to a larger walkways, and a um, a employee at uh, McIntyre Loam um, uh, decided to come over and with a uh, chainsaw and um, slight in a uh, make a clean cut from the from the walkway at that intersection. And that was very and that was um, very generous of him. Great. Well, congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Her. How long did it take you to do the project? It took me about two weeks, probably. Sorry. I had to um, I had to apply Roundup around the um, the grass that I wanted to, so where I was going to put the mulch bed around the uh, statue, and then I one I took me one weekend to um, plant the shrubs and everything, and then the next weekend after that, we um, were able to put in the piece on walkway. And how much planning was done in advance of all this to kind of line up your suppliers and get your help organized and so forth? Um, there was quite most. It was um, most of the planning was done before the project. Um, but yeah, I had to get the, I got to get everything set up before the uh, project began. Mm. That's great. And explain a little bit how how an Eagle Scout is achieved by ninth grade. How did you pull this off? I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> an honest answer. Good enough. That's great. Congratulations. Thank you for your help. Thank you very much, Mr. Sistari. How many people did you have helping you out with this project? I had about eight. I had family friend. I had some family friends, and then a few um, boy, uh, members of Boys of Two Four. Help out. And it, it sounds a bit like hard labor. How did you get them to uh, get out there and help you? <laughs> um, it was. So I can you repeat the question. I how, how how did you entice them to come out and help you? Um, give them food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another life so lesson. Food works. What kind of food? <laughs> That's great. Thanks a lot. Okay, Mr. Catino. Yeah, one of the <clears throat> one of the things we usually say to the uh, the scouts jokingly is, you know, keep the keep your uh, Eagle Scout uh, identification next to your license in case you ever do anything bad. But ninth grade, what's your next step? I mean, what's what comes after Eagle Scout? Are you going to start form your own troop at this point? I'm planning on running for senator next year. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Congratulations. If it wasn't for the fact you'd be 35, we'd believe it. I wouldn't advise that if I were you. <laughs> <laughs> Been there, done that. <laughs> All right. Great job. Thank you very much. Thanks, Michael. Thank you. Uh, the final scout uh, I'd like to introduce should be familiar to you, members of the board. Um, his name's Dan Plako. Hi, my name's Dan Palaco. Um, my project, I made a loop in the woods next to the center trail with a bridge on it. Um, it's about 
half mile long. And we did it three Saturdays worth of work. Uh, so it's a nice little area to walk through the woods if you want to go down there and check it out. Any questions on this one? Could go oh, right there's going to be plenty of questions so, on this yeah. one. You have <laughs> to, uh, I'm going to recuse, recuse myself. On I thought about it. I thought about recusing myself here. <laughs> so stepping off. Yeah, the proud father is going to uh, stay very quiet on this one. I'll start with Mr. Gattino, though. Excellent. So uh, what was your fundraising and, and, and your budget that, uh, for your project? The Trails Club actually had allocated money for it. They had about $7,000 overestimate. Uh, we used a couple hundred, I think. But... <laughs> Yeah, so they had actually gotten town money for, we mostly spent it on the lumber for the bridge. Anybody you want to thank? Any, any because I, I've seen, you know, everybody else has been using uh, McIntyre, has been great, and Hopkinton Lumber, anybody else? That, uh, uh, we got the wood from Hopkinton Lumber. Um, we actually carried it across the street, which was kind of <laughs> tough. But, uh, yeah, and then Peter Legoy from the Trails Club was very helpful. Um, he pretty much helped me through every step of the process, so great. my parents. Great job. I had to go to CONCOM and the whole nine yards. Mr. Sestari. Um, yeah, you know, I know that uh, Mr. Catino was mentioning it, Mr. Herr mentioned it earlier. We have, we have a lot of great business partners in town, too. And uh, I know earlier it was um, uh, mentioned, um, I'm sorry. Uh, we, we were mentioning a couple, but this this time, you know, we're also getting around to Hopkinton Lumber. Hopkinton Lumber is one of those business partners in town that, you know, time after time, you know, we hear about their donations and uh, we thank them. Um, Daniel, how many people did you have helping you out? Uh, total, I think about 15 to 20, somewhere, somewhere really? around there. And how did you how did you coordinate them over three weeks? Were you able to get people to keep coming back for more or did yeah. you rotate them? It's pretty even. People, uh, most people that came, I think, helped out at least twice. So that was really good. Great. Well, thanks a lot. And the name I was drawing a blank on was McIntyre Loan, right. so I don't want to leave them out. <laughs> Mr. Hart. So is this the trail that's uh, named after the two runners from Hopkinton? Uh, on, on this side of the center trail, you kind of go off into the woods. If you're going towards the schools, you take a right. And you go down yes. and loop around in that yeah. bridge under. So I ran that the other day for the first time. Bridge didn't break? And I saw the bridge. I'm like, it's <laughs> got to be a scout trip. It's got to be a project. So that's great. I didn't know that was your project. Congratulations. It's a Thank wonderful you. trail. It's a nice <laughs> run. It's a tough little run because you kind of got to do a few turns. And yeah. there's some roots and stuff in there that you got to go up and down. So it was a great little workout. Excellent project. Thank you very much for your Thanks. contribution. Thank you. And Mr. Mosher. I think that trail was originally... Um, Started by an acquaintance of Peter Legoy that passed away. Yeah, that, it, there's a sign there yeah. with their little remembrance for them. Yeah, and I've, I've run that a couple of times in the past. Um, it was a little bit scrubby. Um, did you run into any unexpected challenges on that? There was a lot of, uh, especially down by the stream, there was a lot of growth that we had to clear out. So um, that was, I mean, it was really dense. It was tough to get through, and then at the beginning too, there were vines that we had to clear out and stuff, and so that was probably the most challenging part of clearing the actual trail. Well, thank you very much for the work. That's that's something um, both myself and my family has used, and I, I'm sure many other people in town that utilize the center trail will benefit from it. So, thank you. Thanks. All right, you're released. <laughs> oh, you could have had some fun there. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait a minute. I'll pay for it later. So, all right, now the fun part. Well, the, really, this has all been fun. But now we've got the Girl Scouts coming in, and, uh, which has been a new thing for us. We, for years, we've had Boy Scouts to come through. But only, I think only in the past year have we started to have a bunch of Girl Scouts come through. So this has been a little bit of a learning experience for the board, but a fun one. But I also have one more administrative item I have to do, believe it or not, another public hearing. So let me give me one, another quick commercial break, and then we'll come back. So we have a posted public hearing that has to be opened at 7.55, a discontinuance of portions of Franklin Road and Peach Street. The Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing to consider the proposed discontinuance of Peach Street and portions of Franklin Road. Chair to a motion to open the public hearing. So move. Second. So move. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Chair continues the public hearing. Please. Hello. I'm Deb Dion, and I am the leader of Troop 73978, and I have two Gold Award Girl Scouts to introduce tonight. I have Emma Dion and Julia Altman. Hello, I'm Emma Dyer, I'm a senior at Hopkinton High School, and for my Gold Award project, 
I worked with the Hopkins and Historical Society to research and create a interactive presentation for the uh, third graders at um, at Elmwood Elementary School here in town. And my goal was to create a presentation that was interactive, taught them about um, Hopkins history and also how people lived back like 100 and 200 years ago. I really wanted to let kids know that history can be fun and it's something that I really love. So um, I worked with 11 third grade classes or, um, in last June. Um, I did three 20 minute presentations and um, there were like, so there were 11 third grade classes and all their teachers could get a, break, a little break. Now tell us, the, you, there's different stars for Girl Scouts, and this has been a learning experience. So Gold yeah. Story, it's not amount of time you have to put in on it, right? So this is like yes. a Yes, approximately a 100 hours is what you <laughs> need to put in, yes. Um, I got my, uh, my bronze award, silver award, and those, you work with your troop on it, and then the gold is where the girls get to like, do their own thing. So Holy it's God. not 100 plus hours of work. <laughs> yeah. On that one project? Yes. <laughs> That's, that's wow. incredible. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Sistar, any questions? Did you, uh, did you finish this project in time to use it on your college applications? Yes, I did. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Right. I actually finished it. So I finished it last. Um, I started it fall of 2014, and I actually started out working just with the Historical Society, like doing inventory and getting them ready for the 300th day anniversary. Um, and then I hit like kind of a part that it was a little difficult for me to know where to go from there. They didn't need a ton of extra help. And so I eventually tried a bunch of ideas and realized that I really love working with kids. And so I took my project in a different direction and used what I would learned at the Historical Society to come up with this project. Great. And do you know where you're going to be going to college and what you plan to study? I'm planning to study um, secondary education and history, and I'm not 100% sure where I'm going yet. Great. Well, congratulations. Um, similar, similar to Boy Scouts, 5% of the Girl Scouts uh, who are eligible for this award are actually able to achieve it. It's, it's a high honor, and congratulations. Thank you. Just to her. That sounds like a great project and one that's very interesting. It's nice to combine your passion and their projects sort of put them all together. And it do ended up being community. really fun for me, and I hope the kids, yeah. That's great. That's great. And you present yourself very well. You'll be an excellent teacher. The kids <laughs> will listen to you when you speak. Well done. Thank you very much. Congratulations. It's going to be a little more scary. But, huh? <laughs> <laughs> there you are. Yeah, that, um, um, what I'm most impressed about is how you morphed your project. How you, you, it started off being, you know, cataloging and get, getting ready for the 300th, but then to morph it into something that you could actually teach, and and then actually taking it and teaching the 11 classes to give the uh, the teachers a break, but to also inspire the children into into history because uh, we 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 can't forget it. If we forget it, we're due to repeat it. So that's a it's a great thing. Uh, we have some great history teachers at the high school. We do. And my, my daughter loves them also. Congratulations. No. <laughs> great job. Thank you. Then Mr. Mojo. So I think the first uh, Gold Star Awards were presented with Nancy Burdick maybe about four years ago. Really? And we may have had so, a couple. Yeah. yeah, we may have had a couple, but then yeah. we didn't have any for a long so time. It's been a while, so it's, yeah. great, it's great to have some again. Um, how do the kids react? Um, you know, they actually, I had, I babysat some of them actually, like some of the kids are from my neighborhood, but um, they told their, like me that they really liked it. I actually, um, I had prizes at the end for questions, like I would ask them things that, um, to see if they were paying attention, and they actually, like, I think one of the things that they really liked about it was I kind of used pictures from the historical society that were interesting, like boots from the boot factory, and um, there's like, an old spring like right near my lake and I thought it was really cool because I'd say show them a picture and be like have you seen this and a lot of the kids would say yeah yeah like I've hiked around there with my family and I think it made it a little less boring for them because I know history can be like really boring for young kids so <laughs> well that's great congratulations and I'm, I'm sure the kids were looking forward to the return of their teacher thank you <laughs> yeah good all right. Well, thank you very much for coming up and telling us about this. Thank this you. Been fabulous. We got one more. Hi, I'm Julie Altman. I'm also a senior at Hopkinton High. 
My project was based upon the respite center here in Hopkinton. For those who don't know, it's a house, basically, it's either like a, they go there during the day or they even sleep there for people of all age, ages with uh, mental disabilities. So I worked with them, um, raising awareness for the center as like through my whole town, my school, all my sports teams, and through two different churches raising awareness for them and for their big event that they hold every year here in town, the 5K um, race for um, just the respite center where they make most of their profit from. So I got my, all my sports teams involved in running it, which got a lot of money for the respite center. And I also um, collected everyday items for the center by setting up boxes at churches and my high school and just around town and asking my friends. And I asked them just for soaps and towels, which the recipe center is in deep need of, and ended up with tons of huge boxes. I have a lot more than I thought I was going to get. And it actually went, like, sprouted past me. People at my church started having their own events, raising money and getting goods for the respite center at their schools. And one of my leaders at my church actually heard about the respite center through me and decided to retire there helping out. That's awesome. So how much did you end up, do you, have, do you know how much you actually ended up getting at the end? And money wise, no, because it all went, um, the money was raised, they're very uh, strict. They don't accept like checks or cash handed to them. They raise money basically through this event and they raise it by people signing up for it and actually participating in the event. And so I had my friends, everyone sign up for it, even if they couldn't go that day, but just to get like money for the center. So I do not know amount-wise the money, but um, goods-wise, there was tons of boxes. <laughs> and how many hours did you put in on this? Did you calculate? A hundred plus. That's what we had to do. That was wrong. Yeah. I can't get over that amount. Mr. Moji, you want to start? Well, you certainly picked a great cause. That's a wonderful center, and, and the people there are wonderful as well. Uh, you must have gotten a lot out of that experience besides just, just the fundraising aspect of it. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yes, of course. What I learned, um, what I kind of had trouble with in the beginning, I thought, oh, I can do this all myself. Like, I can, like, I just put in, like, enough effort. I can get all this awareness. I realized that just how much, like, I can affect other people and bring them in on it. And like they did, they branched off and started their own events. I figured that the people, everyone is like ready to help. They just kind of need motivation and somebody else to start it. And if they see just how motivated you are about the event, they will match your, like the spirit and <laughs> come and donate. So it sounds like some great leadership experience. Yeah. Thank you for that project and congratulations. Thank you. Ms. Catino. Uh, yeah, I, something that, that hit me was how you inspired others to Thank you. Sure. So there's five of us here, and there's a room full of parents and some of your friends and, and other award uh, awardees this evening. Um, but we represent, the five of us anyway, we represent 16,000 people that live here in Hopkinton. And to Mr. Moser's point, you got some great leadership experience uh, doing this project, working with the Respite Center, and I'm sure feeling good inside about your work. Uh, and that experience was sort of by, by example, leadership by example. But there's six, we, we speak on behalf of 16,000 people. And that, well, most of the time we speak on behalf of 16,000 people. Some of the times we don't speak for anyone. <laughs> it might be a little less than yeah. 14,000. But anyway, we, tr we try, let me rephrase. We try to speak on behalf of 16,000 people. For this event, certainly we do. And for all 16,000 people here in Hopkinton, to you and all of your friends here this evening, congratulations on a great job. Uh, we really appreciate your effort on behalf of the community, and you're making a difference in people's lives, and that's just wonderful. Well done. And Mr. Sestardi. Yeah, I mean, the, the whole group, you're an inspiration to uh, the, the people at this table as well as the rest of the community. I mean, you're going out there, you're showing that you care about your community, and you're showing that you are leaders among your peers uh, as well as, as others in the community, and you're doing good things. So keep the spirit up. Um, congratulations to all of you, and we wish you the best of luck as you're moving on to college or 
sophomore year in high school. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's really, it's really incredible what you're doing and, and just keep up with that same attitude and, and caring for the people around you. Julia, thank you for coming up. Thank you. Okay, so now, let's see. So now we're going to issue, uh, I guess, I'll, let me read the proclamations we'd like to give you all tonight because we are, as a community, very proud of you. We want to show that. And then because you have so many of you and the good deals keep coming tonight, the omnipresent representative DICMA will also come up and, and issue proclamations from the, on behalf of the state. So, all right, so starting this off, uh, for the Boy Scouts, Town of Hopkinton, Hopkinton Board of Selectmen, hereby recognizes, all right, Eagle Scout recipient Liam Bosconi, Jack Dion, Eric Landreth, Connor Murchie, Michael McCabe, and Daniel Paleko, the first three of Boy Scout Troop 1, the second three of Boy Scout Troop 4, Hopkinton, Mass, Boy Scouts of America, therefore the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Hopkinton, Massachusetts, join with all their friends and family in recognition of their achievements in attaining the rank of Eagle Scout. Signed under our hand and seal this day, this 5th day of April, 2016, Benjamin L. Paleko Chair, John Cotino Vice Chair, John Mosier, Tatsa Star, and Brian Hur. And then for the Gold Star recipients, Town of Hopkinton Board of Selectmen here recognizes Gold Award recipients Julia May Altman and Emma Meredith Dion, Hopkinton Mass, Girl Scouts of America, Troop, Girl Scout Troop 73798. Therefore, the Board is selecting the Town of Hopkinton, Massachusetts, joined with their family and friends in recognition of their achievement and attaining the rank of Gold Award. Signed under our hand and seal the 5th day of April by this very same people. Representative Dykema, would you like to come, come on up and sure. do your thing? Yeah, you, you want to just read one for, for an example, and then we'll give them all out? Um, I'm going to call Liam Bosconi up. And Liam, we spent the day together on Saturday. Ah, so, so he gets to be the, the, he gets to be the example. But just want to congratulate him again. Uh, right. Good. Oh, I was, yeah, I was, do, do you want to just read it? Yeah, let's, you want to just read it? photo with Carolyn and Dennis.
stand behind. <laughs> I should go back to the seats probably. <laughs> uh, where's Troop 1? Can Troop 1 come over here next? Troop 1 right here? Right here, right where you are. And then Troop 4 over on this side. If you would. Where is it? Is there one also Troop 1? Three. Three, three. Okay. That's right. And the, and the, the, the duty. Okay. All right. One, and one of them are our brother and sister. Oh. Yep. All right. So. Oh, wow, look at all that talent. Holy mackerel, look at all that, huh? Lots of talent. Great smiles right here. Very good. We're going to do another one right here. Looking good. Lots of love. All your parents getting your photos? Yes. Everybody good? All right, picking back up here where we left off. The board's going to return now to a uh, public hearing we opened at 745 and continued. Uh, we're going to consider accepting the following streets recommended by the planning board. Connolly Hill Road, Valleywood Road, Nancy Lane, Carol Ann Drive, and Kerry Lane. Um, Mr. Kamal, do you have any comments about this? Or Lane, do you have any comments about this? Street acceptance.
it. So this is working down the unaccepted streets list that we've had that we said we wanted to work our way through. And the reason is because these folks have been, there's nobody left to go after for the road. Nobody left to go after, and uh, the town's been maintaining them all these years anyway. Yeah, okay. Anybody any questions about the street acceptances? Quick one. Yes, sir. When you say there's no one to go after, meaning all the bonds are either pulled or used up, there's no, nothing left. That's right. These streets were created in the day when the town had not accepting public ways. So these bonds and people went on their way, they were done. Do we have any problems with these streets? I think some of them do need some repair, but uh, we do have an email from John Westerling. Uh, he realizes they're being accepted as is. So, yeah, let me just look at the list again. They're pretty good. Some of them are old, right? I mean, some of them are like from the 60s and 70s. So Connolly Hill Road, been on that many times. It's okay. It's fine. Valleywood Road, is that the Valleywood? Is that the yeah. subdivision that's been on that? Way out the far yeah, end. Okay. Yeah. That one's actually okay. Uh, what's that? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, Nancy Lane. Where's Nancy Lane? It's off of Teresa Road. It's a little street. There's only two driveways. Oh, so it's down big, in... Um, big problems there. I mean, that Charles road's street. okay. Um, Carol Ann Drive. It's a little street off of West Elm. Just yeah. two lots. And then Cary Lane. It's a small street off of Eastview. Okay. So all in established areas. Of town. I, I, I'm fine. Okay. okay. Anybody else got any questions for Wayne? Do we have any abutters, interested parties, anyone else who either has questions? Yes, sir. Can you come to the podium, introduce yourself, name and address, and then ask your question? Uh, Douglas Pratt, 5 Cary Lane. Um, so as far as the residents are concerned, this is just routine and nothing changes. We pay our taxes and the streets nothing. get plowed. You're, it's actually better for you because now we can actually start to spend more money to fix them. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Any, any, other, uh, any other people interested in this hearing? No one wants to speak about this? Okay. Yes, sir. Do you say the same as Kamal? No, I was just recognizing that the, the chair of the planning board is here. And I, look, I looked at him. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to sell through the close. All right. So, uh, Chair, let entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. A motion, second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, that's unanimous. Public hearing is closed. Uh, board will deliberate now. Uh, does anyone have any comments, questions, or to ask? Chair, I'll entertain a motion to accept the following streets recommended by the Planning Board as public ways. Colling Hill Road, Valleywood Road, Nancy Lane, Carol Ann Drive, and Carrie Lane. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Present not voting. That is unanimous. Those streets are accepted. Okay. Next, we'll go back to the public hearing open at 7.55. Uh, this is a public hearing discontinuance of portions of Franklin Road and Peach Street. An action item, the Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing to consider the proposed discontinuance of Peach Street and portions of Franklin Road. Mr. Kamal, anything to open with? Yes, through the chair, also Elaine is here to provide the background to this matter. Okay. So when the Planning Board approved the Legacy Farms Road North subdivision, it involved the relocation of Franklin Road to square up with uh, Legacy South. And so as a consequence, the road was shifted over, and the old sections of Peach Street and uh, Franklin Road that went behind that uh, triangular piece of property where the house is were removed. Um, and so the, um, the abutting landowners have requested the discontinuance of those old roads so that the land can go to the abutting property owners. Okay. Can you have anything to add? You good? Supported. You good? You're in favor? Okay, good. Do we have any butters, interested parties, anyone who'd like? Yes, ma'am. Can you come to the podium, name and address, and ask whatever you have? Hi. The town voted that the entire Franklin Road, what, 19? This is the annual town meeting vote we did. Yes, it was the entire road. Yep. You know it is a historical road.
Okay, so so your uh, just so I understand what you're asking, you, you um, your your belief is that Franklin Road is being renamed. I guess is what you think we're doing right now, and and well, and it goes against the town meeting vote. That what was Franklin Road? Mm -hmm. Has been as part of it was covered over. Correct. Right. And there's a portion which is still. So can, can, can you explain what's going on here and, and whether this gentleman's concern is being addressed? So they're concerned with the name of the new, the new road. Okay. So this board uh, voted to name uh, the road from East Main Street to Wilson Street, or actually Legacy Black North. Road, yeah. Legacy Farms North. Yeah. And they would like the portion that is, is from East Main to the new intersection of Franklin Road and Legacy Farms to be retained the name of Franklin Road. So it's a separate action by this board. It doesn't have to go to town meeting. But didn't didn't town meeting vote to keep the road as Franklin Road three years ago? It did. It was a town meeting vote, and then this board had a, a different vote. So it, perhaps at some future date we can reconcile what the name should be. At the present time, it's still Franklin Road. Legacy North is not open yet, right. so it hasn't been renamed. So are we looking to discontinue? So the portion we're discontinuing, is that does that impact them at, in any way tonight? So, sir, do you understand? So, okay, so you're okay with that part. You're okay. So the actual part we're here to do, which is to discontinue the part that's been, you know, planted over, you're okay, you're okay with? Right. Not changing the name of it going forward. Main Street. I got it. Right. Yeah. I get it. Right. Okay. Right. I get it. Yeah. Okay. And ma'am, is that your concern as well? Yes, and I also would say one other thing. With the Boy Scouts being here, most wonderful thing. Legacy Farm and all their construction, all the silt and everything ran into the vernal pool on my property. Mm -hmm. And now it's a polluted mud puddle. And maybe they can help us get it back. Okay. Because all the turtles are dead. The frogs. Toads, not those that, that I like these guys. But it shows the health yeah. of your land. The health uh, all around. Okay. All right, well, let's take that up as a separate, as a separate matter. With the boy. Um, so, but on the Franklin Road, are, is your concern that it, it, it continue to be named Franklin Road? Absolutely. Okay, fine. So, because and we're not. A, yes, ma'am. It's a historical road. Right. And we're not doing. We're not changing the name, right? We're just. We're just discontinuing the part that no longer exists. Okay. So, sir. I mean, so our our goal tonight is not to change the name of Franklin Road. All we're doing is the part that's listed as a road on the maps right now that's not no longer a road. We're just erasing it from the town's inventory. So we're not going to do anything about the name tonight. And where, what it's, wh who owns that property now? It's town, right? That the covered over? It must be town property. Yeah. Franklin Road is a public way, which would be discontinued. Turns out Peach Street is a private way. Okay, so it's not a public way. Okay. Well, what about what you covered over? What they covered over? Isn't that town property? was so you're not going to what, what are you going to do with it well again it, it's owned by the town so we'll we'll decide that some later time all we're doing tonight is an administrative this is just an administrative detail the road right. no longer exists we just wanted we just want to make it so it doesn't formally exist 
what, we're not going to change the name. We're not going to we're not going to do anything with that land. All we're, all this is just a a purely administrative action to say that the road that no longer exists is not in the town's inventory of roads. That's all we're doing. Yeah. Uh, if I believe you. That's not being done tonight. The question is, are we doing that? On, is there any, was there any plan to do that in a town meeting warrant? The name, there is no intention to change There's the nothing name. going on with changing the name. Nothing, period. Well, I, I, I guess, my So I, I, I appreciate your concern, and I, re and I remember the town meeting vote. That's not under discussion tonight. And, it's, and it, to my knowledge, it's not planned to be under discussion any time. All, all, there's nothing about that tonight. Just the part that went away, we're just taking it off the map. That's it. I, I promise you. Okay? And the Boy Scout, you could follow up separately. But. That was wonderful. Okay. So are you okay? Any Thank ma'am, are you okay? If, if you're not going to change it I, on me. Uh, Thank you. Scout's honor, just to pick up on what happened earlier tonight. <laughs> Do we have any other? Yes, sir. Are you okay? Okay, good. I just want you to be happy. All right. Do we have any other abutters, interested parties? Anyone else who wants to talk to this, sir? Hi, I'm Roger Mezzet. I live at 9 Franklin Road, oh, I think. Recognized. <laughs> and, oh, the Witness uh, Protection Program? <laughs> I'm, I'm in favor of, uh, you know, uh, having the old roadway, uh, right-of-way uh, uh, declared abandoned. And okay. uh, I agree that the historical... Uh, naming of Franklin Road, whether it's part of this issue or, you know, a later issue, uh, should be uh, maintained. I know. Okay. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak to this issue? Surprisingly contentious. Okay. Okay. Any questions from the board? Chairman, a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Motion second. All in favor say aye. 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 Post President Oden, this unanimous. Mr. Uh, Her. So we are dealing tonight basically with the triangle at East Main Street and the road to the right there which was Peach Street which is gone it's now been straightened out but it's my understanding that, that road is now called Legacy Farms North this, well, <laughs> I don't know the street name is up to the Board of Select but you did entertain that in the past if entertain did, it but we did not did. vote for it no we did you we, did. we put it on the warrant we put it we voted it we put it on the warrant right time meeting the Mezzets stood up and, and town meeting voted against it okay and so and then and then just so right now it's frank to my knowledge I'm it's still confused. called franklin road right well this has nothing to do with this this is a totally separate issue that we're not that we're not touching right but when i when i literally ran by there the other day and there's a sign that says legacy farms north i don't know that i think that's the name of the road that no. was what was voted. so their concern is legit or is it dated? The condition of the vote was that it not, the name not be changed until the street was accepted. So until Legacy Farms North is accepted, technically it remains Franklin Road. So it's something to work out in the future. Hey, we have to work on this in the future. I don't. It's not clear. I don't deny that, but it, it, has, it, has, it doesn't have, has nothing to do tonight. And to my knowledge, we're to my with, knowledge, we're it remains called tonight. Franklin Road. But there's still some work to be done here to address this concern. Yes, yes. I but, I, but to Fair my enough. knowledge, it still remains called Franklin Road, as far as... You just have to remember that, Mr. Kamal. Going forward. I, again, to be clear, Some of us. Uh, right I think the person that will be presented to a town meeting under the 2016 annual town meeting warrant is in relation to discontinuing the layout of the portion described and the services that are there on. But nothing about the name. Yeah. Just the piece that went... So what I said is true. Yeah. Okay. Making sure. Okay. okay, so we closed the public hearing. We had discussion. Does anyone else have any questions? 
Okay, Chair Lantin, a motion to uh, discontinue um, the, Peach, the Peach Street. Do we have to discontinue Peach Street because it's a private way? Okay, and portions of Franklin Road as described. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, President, voting. That's unanimous. Okay, so that's done. Now we move on to the annual town meeting warrant, a discussion action item, board second review, and possibly sign the 2016 annual town meeting warrant. And we'll begin taking positions on articles. Ms. Kamal, we don't have either an electronic version or a printed version. We, we have a printed version of the final warrant in front of you. Oh, thank you. Okay. Right here. Yep. Okay, so, um, so typically what the board does at these last couple of meetings before a town meeting is goes through the warrant and starts to take positions on, well, a couple of things. First of all, we have to vote to sign the warrant, which we can discuss tonight. I think we'd like to think about signing it. It doesn't officially close to the 15th? 21st. 21st. It doesn't close to the 21st, but we can sign it. Um, in anticipation of it not changing. So we could both sign the warrant, and then also we, we st need to start going through and taking positions. And Ms. Kamal, you want to talk about the strategy we, we sort of outlined on this? Or is that what you want to cover tonight here? Keep going. No, you can, you can go. Take, take it away. Yes, um, I think based on, on, on prior practice, uh, the board uh, has used at least I think four categories for reviewing the town meeting additives and taking positions. Uh, these categories include the following um, <coughs> articles that the board is required by law to take a position on, uh, such as the operating budget, revolving funds, and transferring uh, funds to the OPEP trust, as well as that pay as you go. Um, we have identified those articles and we'll share with the board when we get to that point. Uh, we have also identified positions where the board, on behalf of the town, acquiring an interest in land. Uh, then the third category is the one where the board will be exercising its executive policy status uh, as the chief executive board of the town. And then finally, uh, based on prior discussions with the board, there's, we have had this uh, general category, which is the any other article that the board may be interested in expressing its views. Right. Good. Okay. So I think what we should do, we don't have a lot of capital requests this year. Um, I'm wondering if we should just maybe have the DPW and fire chief since there is, is uh, um, are they both here tonight? John, is John here? I can't see him. Is John here? John. John. I don't know what John is. Why is John? We know the fire chief is here. Perhaps he is getting us started. Do we want to? Um, do we just want to have him come up and talk about his article and then and separately, and then we can just sort of go through the rest of them. Start. Where is? Where is he? This is all pay as you go. Yeah. Um, no, it's repurpose. Chief's article. Um, remember when he came before the board, there are two articles that right. previously approved the town meeting that he would like to repurpose. Uh, those are listed as articles. Yeah, 16, 17, yes. 18. And then right after that is the article that identifies okay. how the chief is proposing to and John Westerling isn't here tonight, so okay. So why don't we do fire chief tonight? We'll do Westerling next next meeting, and then we'll after we get the fire chief, just because he's here, we'll have him do this, and then we'll um, we'll just start from the front. Chief, you ready to talk about this, or do you want a minute? Yeah, in, in fact, in front of you, I also included a memo I received from the chief explaining. All right. Hey, chief. Hello. Welcome. So can you just um, maybe just talk us through this memo? Um, and that way, when we get to your article, we can just go a little more quickly through it. Sure. So the, the first item is a uh, capital request for the replacement of car four. And that is a uh, fire inspection vehicle that is a 2002. It's got 89,000 miles on it, and I would rate it as poor. It can't go anywhere else. It needs to just be put down. So um, it was on the capital replacement plan last year, and it got pushed out, and it's, it's done. Okay. So that's the one actual request for funds for capital. Okay. And the rest of this is the, is the stuff you came through and talked to us about before that the was repurposing? The presentation, yep, last Has week. anything changed on that in terms of details? No change. Okay. Does anyone have any questions for the chief about either of these items? 
Any, any questions? Any questions? You need a motion to support the article for the. Well, I think I thought we just we'll just do it when we get to it. But I just figured since I had this in front of me, we could just yeah, cover it. What, what, yes, sir. Please. Did you put away enough money to get the ladder truck that you really want? I thought we just start in front and go to we'll go right just go kind of straight. Well, that right. will probably be the the big question as we go. Um, again, in the presentation a couple weeks ago, there's a little bit of risk. We're starting at zero. Um, we did a lot of shopping in the last even three weeks. Um, it'll be a challenge to get one with a pump at that price, but we may be able to pull it off, and that's not a have to have. So I still feel confident that I can deliver on what I propose to you. Could we, can he add more money in, in this if he needs to, to, to make sure that you get the truck? If, you know, for, for, for want of a, of a few thousand dollars, let's put it in now so you get exactly the truck that's going to, that's sure. I think my suggestion would be um, I, I believe I can land what I propose to you. Um, if it isn't coming to fruition for the latter, I know the other two pieces are fine. Um, I could always say to you that we're not finding the right ladder. It's not coming in on price. That We knew there's a little risk to that anyways. And I would just suggest we're at zero anyways right now. So in that time, we could just see how it goes. I, I think I can land it without having to ask more money right now. And you understand kind of what it is. We are buying a used truck. It'll be older. The idea is to put a newer one in capital that we can depend on down the road, and it fits our plan two, four, five, whatever you want to do. You know, if you want to adjust it, I'll let that be your call. You good? Yes, sir. Um, in, this, in this bucket of new trucks, does I think I know the answer, but does everything have to be itemized individually like this, or um, can... Yeah. Can it can it be seven hundred and twenty five thousand uh, dollars with the goal of you know replace rescue one add a ladder and then re equip and reconfigure engine two and four so that there's a little more flexibility if we get a ladder one for a hundred thousand know, yeah, then we have another twenty five toward rescue one or anything like that. Do we have Do you know the answer on that? Is there any latitude? I don't think you can move from articles like that, can you? Well, which, what's, well, again, so we have a sum. We're just trying to stay within the sum. I think the question from Mr. Sestari is, do the individual components of the sum have to be outlined, or can it just – I think I don't know you can just put it in and say – Yeah, I know. It's, yeah. um, it's five corners. It's trying to <laughs> – <laughs> okay, okay, why don't we evaluate that one? Thank you. Any, any other questions? Yeah, you could. I have any other questions? All right, Chief, thanks. Okay. All right, so let's. Um, so we're going to start up front. I guess. Can we do a standing motion? We could certainly put that in place. I think the pro what I'm wrestling with, Mr. Kamalo, is do we know enough about any of these items to go through them tonight in terms of the dollar amounts? You know, like the transfers. Well, the budget stuff, we're obviously going to have to pass over until we get it back from the appropriations. Chapter 90, I guess we know. Stable, you know. All the transfers, do we know what, how much those are? We don't get the amounts yet. So do we have a choice in terms of the transfers? Well, stabilization amount, you can change. Hmm. That's what I meant. I meant yeah, like that, like those kind of transfers. I'm just, I don't want to spend a lot of time work, work talking about things we can't actually make a decision on yet. So, um, and I'm looking through this, and I'm not sure I see anything we can actually make a decision on yet except the chief's articles because we don't have all that many, then it goes right into the school committee and, uh, pl and planning board. We're going to pass over to the DPW we got a su Well, John's not here. we got a super thin warrant this year. What do you need? Oh. So is there anything we have enough detail on that we can actually talk to it? I don't believe so. All the members are going to focus on DPW and the fire department. Okay. Right, so we'll skip on DPW. Okay. All right, I think... Um, Unless anybody else feels strongly, I don't know that I feel like we can. It's worth it, worth our time to go through this. Um, uh, no, no dissenting opinions. You, 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 you concur? Okay. Yeah. Therefore, the only action for the board tonight would be to consider signing the order. Right. But, but for the next week, just to be clear, we're going to have all these deep. Like, there's a lot of stuff we have to get details on. You know, the sidewalk master plan, we, which we haven't even seen yet. We need to see that in advance. So there's a lot of detail that has to come through here. I mean, like, the good news is it's not many items, but, okay. We got, we got a lot to do for the next meeting. Did you, you were good? You, I you were good. Okay. So any dissent to, to pass this over to the next meeting? Move to sign the warrant as written. Okay. We have a motion to sign the warrant. 
Second. We have a motion and a second for the discussion on that. Yeah, when is our next meeting? 20, next week? No, 26th. So. I don't think it's going to be a problem I, if we I, have I, the detail. This is the thinnest warrant I've ever seen. Yeah, it's just this is nice and thin. Shocked. Mm -hmm. Are you are you good? Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so any further discussion about the uh, motion to sign the warrant? All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed present that voting. That's unanimous. So the, the board will execute the, um, the warrant later on tonight. All right, and we'll pick this up. We need to set aside a lot of time for this next time, and everyone has to be here, and we have to have a lot of numbers because there's, there's no time to go through this after that. All right, next item on the agenda. Oops. 840 um, is the fire chief discussion action item. The board of selectmen will review the performance of acting chief Steve Slayman and consider his appointment of the town's full-time fire chief. Okay, so um, uh, how, what happened here? So uh, in January, former chief retired. Um, board uh, conducted a, had conducted a hiring process to find to hire a new fire chief. At the end of the day, um, the, we came forth and we had um, a lot of sundry reasons. We had one candidate who we think very much of, but the board um, had some uh, conditions it wanted to um, achieve before uh, before going forward with a full time appointment. And those three conditions were the board wanted to um, reopen the process and see, uh, see what came in in terms of, of candidates for the process. The board wanted to um, put the, um, the, the former assistant chief in the acting chief role for, for a period of three months, roughly, and, um, and let him uh, uh, act in the, in the position and, and get a feel for his performance. And the board also wanted to um, put the um, uh, now acting chief through an assessment center to have an independent evaluation of, of him, um, which hadn't been conducted in the prior process, but which, again, we thought was important. So we sit here now, April 5th. We've now had um, all those things accomplished. We, we've had the chief in the chair for a while. We've gotten to know him, I think, much better than we did before um, in a positive way. Um, we've um, we've uh, had an assessment center completed on the chief. Uh, the board has those results. The board has, I think, independently reviewed those results. Um, those results are not public because they go in the chief's record. But again, all the members have access to it tonight, and the, and the, the board can discuss it in public session to the, to the extent we, we wish to. Uh, and then also we conducted a process to look for candidates. Um, uh, uh, suffice to say, we had, we had a number of interested parties in the position, but we haven't taken that forward um, uh, at this point. So uh, what I'd like to do tonight would be um, have the chief come up and uh, uh, just sort of tell us what's been going on. I mean, I'd like, I'd like to sort of hear you just talk about how things have been going in the, in the department, how you liked it, how you felt about things. And then I'd like to um, have the board members uh, come around, ask you questions, maybe give some comments on your performance, maybe talk about any of those issues, whether it's the process, the, um, the assessment center, or anything else, sort of interact with you on this. And then uh, we'll take it from there. Sure. Well, thanks, Mr. Chairman and the board. Um, I think first off, I want to thank the public. I've had amazing support over the months, and that's just uh, really helped with some strength. I want to thank the board because uh, you also have been supportive to me, and then the firefighters uh, have uh, just been great to help me with some of the goals and objectives we've talked about. So thank you very much. I know it kind of started out awkward and it was a journey I wasn't quite expecting. Um, but really, you started out from the beginning saying, um, be the fire chief. And uh, I thank you for that. That really helped just going back to the organization. Um, they heard that. Um, I took it and ran with it. it um, I knew that was going to be vital for us to get to some of the goals that I've envisioned since I've been a little guy coming through this fire department. So um, I think first off, some of the work I did just before I got started is I did work on what I would do. Um, just that standard 120-day plan. Where am I going to go here if I get the nod? And um, I met with the guys and had a lot of different groups. I, 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 I hit my staff first, met with the union representatives, and then talked to some one-on-ones, worked the floor to say, how are we doing? And uh, in that conversation in the first week, I, I really felt confident we could get there. I could see some people saying, let's, let's, let's move this thing. Let's, let's have some successes here. 
Um, I focused just on building some trust, getting some better communications, um, and uh, service delivery to the community. I knew those would be the big things that um, the eyes were on us. How would we perform? So um, in the, we're at 105 days now. Um, I just did a kind of a review with my staff after the assessment. I, I kind of went through some of the stuff, the exercises the assessment center ran me through, and I, I said, hey, this, this is what you have to do when you're uh, looking for uh, advancement. So um, for them, it was great because it was a journey for them, too. They've taken on a lot of responsibility. They've um, an initiative. They're performing. We've talked about results every couple of weeks. We get together as a staff and talk about the results of the projects that we have. And um, literally on the big five initiatives that we worked on, we're at the point at this 105 days where they are all coming in in line and we haven't really done a lot of that before like watched it all the way through so that's been exciting for me I think it's been exciting for the group um, I don't necessarily get to report that to the community so now I am and uh, and, and it's been nice so that's kind of my introduction and thanks everybody good all right let's um, let's go across and you know board members again comments questions um, anything for the chief mr. Mosier since you've had the closest relationship with them for the longest time I'll let you get started all right thank you um, Chief Slayman, you came in after Chief Clark, who was a, uh, I think she was to fill. Um, and I have been fortunate to be liaison, I think, for four of the five years I've been on the board, or four of the six years, or five of the six years, or something, a like long time. Yep. Um, so one of my concerns, and probably that of the boards as well, was uh, you know, how, you would, um, how you would take the reins. And you immediately took the reins, um, started to, to make changes that you wanted to make and, and put your mark on the department uh, despite being in the, in the acting position. I think that was a directive the board gave you, um, but you did that right off the bat. I've, I've heard lots of positive comments back from members of the department. Um, you threw us a bit of a curve a few weeks ago with the initial budget proposal on the truck that was uh, thinking out of the box. Um, I guess just you know where do you feel where do you feel things are at how things are going generally uh, what do you want to focus on going forward yeah I mean that's a great question I I kind of did a little reflecting um, in the last uh, couple of weeks after the assessment center and um, I even sat down with the union president yesterday and I, I said kind of a similar thing where are we at how are you feeling and um, uh, I said I didn't want to speak to it without really being connected to him and um, he felt good he felt like we're making a relationship or learning some mutual trust um, we laugh because we use some words back and forth we've been talking about staying in lanes and having some faith with each other you know so that it's just not all quick reactions and distrust and whatnot so um, I've I felt like we've made real progress there I, I honestly can say I feel that all the way around my work at Town Hall has been great my uh, experiences with the board have been great um, I honestly it's not that we haven't been without problems that we work on but I don't feel like there's been a hurdle that we haven't gotten through or over yet so I'm I'm pretty excited about that well, the fire, fires have kept you busy um, keep using the tools in the toolkit okay I'm good Mr. Hurd, got any questions for the so so you mentioned the word awkward uh, a couple of minutes ago sort of as the start of this process um, and it was awkward you know and maybe it still is awkward a little bit but the public management process is awkward it's awkward for us we're all in the private sector sure we manage people for a living um, and, and and when you manage in the private sector you go in and close the door and you have a conversation with the employee or the employer and it's not as awkward as this there's a television camera there I mean I can see you on the TV over there when you're talking the process in the public sector is awkward sure. by nature we can't we can't do much about that mm -hmm. um, but I think you've done an excellent job in that awkward arena and you stayed focused as there was a lot of noise all around. Uh, so job well done there. Um, tell, I got a couple of kind of, so continuing the awkwardness a little bit, but I believe we have to manage and we got we to probe a little bit. Tell me about the two big fires we had. Sure. One down here on Hayden Row and the other one just a week or so back. Sure, Pine Tree uh, Lane. I think yep. it was a total loss. Tell me how, the, how did those scenes go? Um, we had... After every f big incident like that, it, we, we get together and we ask, how did it go? And we kind of, um, 
we work ourselves pretty good. You know, uh, at the scene, you kind of say, what do we get there? But when we go back, we dissect them pretty good. Um, lessons learned is um, the scenes were calm, organized. Both fires had a little challenge where command gets apart from the operations a little bit just by they were unique scenes, which could really over-challenge us, and they didn't. Um, each time I had a lieutenant that was in an operational position, they did a great job running the operation right around the fire that allowed me to kind of stay back and organize resources coming in so they were coordinated and safe. And um, for we haven't had major fires like that in a long time, other than my buddy Pete's here, I hate talking about the restaurant, but that was our, you know, we haven't had large scale fires like that in a long time. So we've, in the last six months to a year, I've had some pretty large scale fires. And the, the guys really responded well to these incidents. They did in those two. The challenges were um, lengthy water supply. Um, it takes a while for us to get enough people on scene, and they did good with it. They uh, rationed their water. There was, we review the tapes for those calls to work with our new public safety dispatch. And um, I was, it was remarkable how everybody stayed in a calm presence, the timing, the order, everything. I'm proud of it. Okay, good. Um, so who's the boss in the fire department today? I am the boss and the leader, and I am a servant leadership style. You would see for me as I like having my successes come to fruition, the results through others. That's, that's my style. Um, if that wasn't, if I didn't think I could get the organization working that way, um, I would back away from this spot. I have more confidence after the 105 days that that can work. Um, I'm like so proud of the way the staff responded. Um, I could not have handled the load. We joke about my desk. I could not have handled the load unless everybody stepped up and worked on the the responsibilities that come into my office. Um, I was able to delegate them. They are, they are reporting to me and working with me, for me, for you. So I um, hope that answers your question. I'm, I'm proud of that part. So do you feel there's anybody in the department that doesn't want you to be the boss? Is anyone nipping at your heels? Honestly, like every organization, there's a few people that are trying to sit here and say, where are we going? And that's when I talk to you about building that um, the, uh, I, I call it the faith, you know, take a leap of faith. And, and, and uh, I'm really proud of the number of people that are chugging forward. And, um, you know, that's one of my questions we had before. And I, and I believe that if we just keep having these successes, people are going to see it, build faith, and come along. So um, it's not, everybody is not walking around hugs and kisses, but we're doing really well. I'm proud of it. Well, you're not running a florist shop over there, right? So you're not selling love. We're not worried about love so much. Is are we functioning efficiently and we're getting the job done and you feel like you're in control of the situation? I, lack of discipline would not be a story coming out of the station right now. Do you want the job? I, I'm dying for the job. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Uh, Sestari. Um, Chief, first of all, I want to echo all the compliments that, uh, that the other board members have given you. Uh, last few months have been... Um, impressive. Uh, I like to see your style. I like to see your accomplishments. Um, Mr. Hurd just took uh, one of my questions. You know, I know that we had a conversation uh, very early on in the process, and we were talking about how you know, this, this kind of interim period is also an opportunity for you to figure out, you know, is this something that you really want? Because um, you know, this isn't, this isn't something that you leave at home, uh, or excuse me, leave in the office when you go home on a Friday night. And I think you knew that before, but uh, it's good to hear that you're enthusiastic about the job. Um, what, uh, in, in the last 105 days, uh, are there any particular challenges that, that you've seen uh, for yourself and, and things that you need to, uh, I, guess, I guess, learn to deal with in, in new ways? <clears throat> um, I think, and, and you guys mentioned it out of the gate, my experience in, at the top of handling all of these items when you are the decision maker, the policy maker, um, the buck stops here, um, that was a little uh, intimidating to start. I almost feel like it was a blessing because we had a lot of challenges right out of the gate. And I just, it was good because it almost got me into autopilot and 
and you just, there was no pause. I literally have not been out of the office probably one day. So it, it's, um, I actually reflect on that and say, thank you, that was good. I needed that kind of into the fire test. Um, so um, they're a great group of guys and you learn how to prioritize the fact that we're here to serve the public and there's a mission and that's just all in front of us. And I talk to my staff and the firefighters and I say, it's an opportunity for them too, you know? It's, um, and, and that's the part that kind of excited me. They responded to that. I said, uh, everybody here can start moving. You know, we, you got to see what I'm going through in movement and don't ignore it, realize it. And uh, we've had a lot of great dialogue off of that. Great, thanks a lot, Chief. Mr. Catino. Chief, great job. You've done a great job, and, and I don't know, unlike I, I, some of the other guys up here with me, um, I actually got to see you and your team in action just a couple weeks ago at, at, at the pond, um, and it was just, it was so methodical, it was, it was just watching the guys diagnose where the, where the issue was up in the ceiling, found it, and uh, controlled it, you know, they just, it was just amazing, and then you were out there coordinating it, it's, um, Fabulous, uh, you know, and, and the out of the box thinking, as as Mr. Moshe was talking about with the with the fire trucks and and everything, um, I'm so, uh, I'm so pleased with the with the work you said. The communication, they're sending us out all those communications. Fabulous, thank you very much. My pleasure. Okay, good. Chief, um, I, I'm going to kind of bounce around a little bit just because everyone's asked a lot of good questions. Can we go back to the the fires, right? Because at the end of the day, that's sort of where. You know, where it all matters, I guess. Um, talk about you. You know, you talked a lot about how the folks, you know, the troops did on the at the fire on the on the scene and all and, and all the good things. What's your evaluation of how of how you have been doing? You, you know, how you how did you run the scene? What would you have done differently? What'd you learn from doing that? I mean, again, part sure. let, let, like let's come back to the initial conditions here. The issue, you know, and we'll talk. I'll talk more about this in a second. One of the issues when the board when you came forward to the board was we just didn't really have, we didn't know you very well, right? We hadn't, sure. we hadn't had a lot of exposure to you. We weren't, you didn't seem like you'd run a lot of these scenes. Talk about what's been going on at these big fires. What have you been doing right? What have you been doing wrong? What have you been, what have you been picking up along the way? Sure. I, I, I liked, I'm pretty hard on myself by nature. I, I used to always say to Chief Clark, you don't have to worry about critiquing me because I'll rip myself apart before you get a chance. And, um, you know, and he laughed, but what we did, we did a lot of good reviewing every time after a fire, you know, so. What's, what, that, what that does for me is it just makes me do the exercise every time. What are the disciplines? You know, Pete's a pilot, and I laugh because I watch him go through all his routine every time. And that's, we try to do that at a fire scene, so we get each piece done methodically. So um, when I come back, some of this, and it's not even an excuse, we show up at, at these two fires, in, and we're showing up with four, five, six people. And, and there's a house involved from side to side, top to bottom, and on both fires, we're worried about exposures, and <clears throat> the first fire, there's a propane tank venting, and these are challenges for us, and, I, and I'm excited that we got through them fine. Afterwards, when we break them apart in our critiques, um, I'm actually pretty proud that I think, I can't think of a major miss that we had. There was lots of improvements we could do, but it wasn't like we missed, had a big miss. So that, that's, that's good that we did the check and, and I think I made it okay. I'm hoping that answers your question. And how do you, and so what do you do with that? So now you, right, you all, you deconstructed it, you debriefed, whatever. Sure. So what, what did you do to fix what you saw that had to get Well, fixed? the pieces we do, I mean, we talked about right in the beginning, training was being one of the big things. So um, our first initiative, we were, and again, I got lucky in timing. Right, I was in there two weeks, and they were talking about a house on Church Street that was available. So right away, my, my by the way, that was a fabulous idea. Unbelievable. So I have a staff that they're they're really we're deep with people with training expertise. So right away, again, I am looking at a desk piled this high. So I look to them. How can we do this? Um, Lieutenant Miller grabbed that. He took members of his group. They wrote up um, a training syllabus that I, it, it is such a high quality. I wanted to show Norman, but he was just smiling and saying, just go do it. This is good, you know. But it, it, they put together the package. All four groups in a short period of time went, and they worked on the disciplines we're talking about. So it's, it's you know, dangerous environments. So they worked on their air packs. They worked on um, searches. They worked on rescuing each other. They were able to breach walls and use the equipment. 
those are all the pieces that we may face at these two fires you asked. So they got to <coughs> practice pieces, and then when we go to the fire, we put them together. So, right. so a big fire happens tomorrow, right? Another big thing. You pull up. Do you have any, like, is there anything you will do differently in the third major house fire because of what you've picked up now in the, these two? Um, I mean, could those houses have been saved? And, and by the way, now this is criticism. I don't even pretend to know about what you do. So I, I'm just, but I just want to, sure. I just want to explore. Like, I, I'm more interested in the learning, actually. We were lucky. Time. I am very confident. I have no um, <coughs> guilt at all. Um, Hayden Rowe, when we pulled up, the roof was falling in. Right. You know, so, and, that was and right, so right away, I yeah, know just what's gone. happening. Yep. When I'm driving to Pine Tree Lane, I'm on East Main Street, and I can see a column of smoke 200 feet in the air, and I, and I have an idea of what's happening. Yeah. My officer on scene reports right away that he has a defensive attack. I know what's going on. It's, it's real rare that we pull up and have a defensive attack right away. Those were two fires. You know, I can only think of a couple more in my career. Usually, we have a smoke detector. It alerts us early. We get in there. It's a room of content. We do our stuff. These were two, I hope, unique circumstances. Um, a house that wasn't occupied yet, and a, and a house that um, didn't have working smoke detectors. And thanks for God that uh, nobody got killed in it. Okay. Good. All right. Uh, part of the problem with this job is, is honestly, is, is knowing a lot of things that not everybody always knows, right? And when, and when the day after we point you acting chief you and i had a, sat in that office and have a, had a very frank and very long conversation about a lot of things i think many of which i think were news to you and and um you know and I, and, and to be honest and i told you this at the time the boards had sort of this challenged relationship with the fire department right everyone loves firemen god knows what about firemen but but as an as an organization it's just you know there's there's been complexities right mm -hmm. and and i i think that was one of the major topics of our conversation sure. was the fact that we're looking to you to to really take the lead, right? You know, sort of help the department evolve, um, uh, uh, you know, in all, in many dimensions, and 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 really, um, you know, be the guy who who leads it in a new way. And um, I will frankly say that I've watched you pretty closely and we've caught up on things you know a few times along the way and I do feel like you have fulfilled our expectations I mean in, in all regards it's been very nice to see you in this job um, um, your ambition for it is is obvious right your I think I think again that was never the, really the question I think I think getting to know you has been a very valuable experience because again we now know that ambition is matched with with capacity to do these things mm -hmm. um you know the only thing i would say is going forward i i think it has to just keep on keep on going sure. right um, um uh, it's 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 obviously a critical job in the town the role of fire departments is evolving the town is expanding like crazy right we have you know all these challenges every year you got the marathon you got the lng tanks you got the you know you got all these sort of unique situations you got 495 that you have to go to all you know so so um i guess what i'm trying to say is this is not an easy job and it's not going to get any easier in the next next several years and um uh you know i guess i i just want to say that again this is not a decision we take lightly you've always got a lot of support in town um people like you um but our job again is to put someone in the job that's going to keep people safe right i mean whether or not they're liked is 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 frankly very much of a secondary concern so, um, um and so i want to be clear i i there i think the reason I think you're hearing good things on the board. Is you really you really show that you you achieve the level we want, and and that we think this town deserves, and we think is is going to be able to take the town forward. So, um, uh, uh, I guess what I'm saying is, you know, it's been it's been a good experience, at least from our perspective. I hope from yours, and um, and I, I think we find ourselves in a much different situation than we did back in January. And so I guess unless anybody has any other questions. The chair would like to offer up a motion that uh, the Board of Selectmen appoints Steve Slayman as the next fire chief for the town of Hopkinton. So, so moved. moved. Second. Okay, we've got a lot of movements and seconds. Does anyone else have any comments to make, sir? So, continuing the awkwardness a little bit, and please don't read into the comments, 
or question, do we have any open-ended process issues beyond Chief Slamming that we have to consider or at least deal with prior to taking this action? No, we have, we have candidates who've submitted, but we haven't moved the evaluation forward because we wanted to get through the evaluation period with him first. And our HR director is good with that? Maria? Okay, all set. Any other questions from the board? Yeah, you know, Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to reiterate some of your points. Um, Steve, you know, it's been abundantly clear that you have the support of the community. Um, but I also want to make it clear that that's not what got you the job. Uh, you earned this job. Excellent. And for anybody to say anything else, uh, thinking that, uh, you know, we, we felt pressured to give you the job or anything like that is just not accurate. And we wouldn't give you the job if we didn't think that you were fully capable. And, and now you've exhibited that. So, uh, you know, at least for me, assuming that I know the outcome of this vote, uh, you know, I do want to congratulate you. I want to thank you. Um, and, uh, you know, I wish you the best of luck in the coming years. Thank you. I appreciate the support. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Oh, geez. Mr. Kamala, really? Too late. Oh, my gosh. Jeez, this better be that good. This better be the vote. best thing ever. <laughs> I, I think, I think um, respectfully, if the board's motion could also uh, reference entering into negotiations. Yeah, right. Subject to successful Indeed. conclusion of contract negotiations. Can I get an amendment to that, to that amended motion? Motion. Is it? motion. Mr. Catino and Mr. M actually, Mr. Mosier and then Mr. Catino second. Okay. Is okay. that in the motion? Except That's in the motion. Amendment. So it's subject to successful conclusion of sure. negotiations. Don't make it difficult. Okay. Uh, all right. Now, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. That's unanimous. Congratulations on the coming. <laughs> Supporting me coming out of the gate was a big deal, so um, thank you, and community, and especially the firefighters. Thank you very much. All right, congratulations, Dan Chief. Very proud of them. I think he's already gotten more gray hair just in 105 days. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he's going to wake up on Saturday morning and be like, what the hell? I'm going to stuff, right? Big night here in town. All right, let him do his thing. All right. That's a good one. Okay, on to item number 11 the agenda. Hopkins and Wine and Spirits reported administrative violations and action item. The Board of Selectmen will review it. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're passing over item 10. Okay. I sorry, that came off the agenda. I should have mentioned that. Item 10 is being passed over in the agenda. Uh, hot, report administrative violation action item. The Board of Selectmen will review an incident report filed by the Hopkinton Police Department alleging an administrative violation in Hopkinton Wine Spirits, namely selling alcohol to an intoxicated person. Chief, can I, uh, police chief, uh, can I get you to come forth? Do you have anything you want? Do you want us? Okay. Mr. Chair, I'm lost. I'm sorry. Item 11? Yes, sir. We, yep. uh, item 10 came off. It wasn't ready for prime time. Thank you. Hi, Chief. How are you? I'm very well. And you? Great. Switch to somewhere. Just in time for six hours, of, six days of snow here, right? So. Yes. <laughs> okay, good. Hey, um, so can you talk to us about this uh, violation report? Yeah, uh, if you don't mind, I was going to have uh, the investigating officer. However you want to handle Sergeant it. Sergeant Van Walton. His second one. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed a trend. <laughs> <clears throat> Good evening, board. Um, 
So I'm here again before you. Uh, <clears throat> this particular incident occurred December 22nd, uh, around 5.20 p.m. Uh, police station received a report of a hit-and-run accident at West Main at South. Um, I was the first officer to arrive at the accident, and I spoke with the operator who stated that he was unable to give a full description of the vehicle, but he thought it was a dark-colored sedan that had come off of South Street, made the left, uh, sorry, the right-hand turn onto West Main, headed towards town, struck him head-on, and continued. Um, Officer Schofield uh, was also in the area uh, looking for the vehicle, um, and as you're aware, it's 5.30 at night, there's plenty of traffic there, uh, but the vehicle could have gone anywhere between 495 West Main. Uh, shortly thereafter, we received a, another report um, of a vehicle that looked like it had fresh damage um, coming out of Lumber Street onto West Main. Uh, that reporting party was able to give us a license plate. Uh, we ran that license plate. Um, it came back to a party in town. Um, while I was clearing the accident, uh, Officer Schofield uh, went to the residence, uh, found the vehicle in question, and the operator uh, passed out on the front steps uh, to her house um, with an uh, unopened bottle of wine. Um, we subsequently arrested her uh, for operating on the influence, leaving the scene, and operating negligently. Um, prior to uh, her being brought to the station, I questioned her as to where she got the wine. Uh, she had stated Hopkins Wine and Spirits. I confirmed that it was, I said, is it the one next to Dynasty? She goes, yes, it was. She was transported to the station. Um, I had left there, gone to Hopkins Wine and Spirits to see if I could have a conversation with the clerk um, who sold her the bottle of wine no less than 10 minutes prior. Um, there was only two clerks working. Um, I spoke with the manager uh, to review some of the tape to see if it's uh, possible to see her come in, purchase it, which clerk she had gone to. Um, I was advised that at this particular time that surveillance system they had wasn't working properly and was, they weren't able to pull the tapes. Um, I had called back to the station, uh, spoke with um, the operator, asked her if, who she bought it from, if it was a male or a female. And she had stated an older male, um, at which point the manager had summoned uh, that clerk to the back of the store. I had a conversation with him. Um, he does remember selling uh, to this individual, uh, stated that she's a regular customer. Um, however, he didn't feel that uh, she had any signs of impairment. Um, and I advised him, well, we believe she did, as she was unable to make it into her house. Um, so he had uh, continued to say that he had had um, other people throughout the day come in and out that he's refused um, sale to because of their intoxication. And then uh, he went on to tell me that he was tip certified, had been working there for years. He would know if somebody was um, under the influence. And I had stated, well, this particular person was clearly under the influence. They were involved in an accident, came here, and left. Um, and at that point, I'd written up the report and uh, forwarded it up to the chief and to you ultimately. Okay. And so, um, okay, and so you're just bringing this forth at this point. Does anyone have any questions for uh, the sergeant? Oops. So the person hit another car, <coughs> went to Hopkinton Wine and Spirits, got the wine, and left? Left Hopkinton Wine and Spirits. I thought it was reverse. It made it home. Okay. No, she, she hit the vehicle, continued up West Main to Hopkinton Wine and Spirits, purchased it, left. That's when another party had called us and said that they observed a vehicle that just didn't look right with fresh damage uh, to the front of their car, gave us a license plate, which ultimately led us to her. And, and so she purchased one bottle of wine at Hopkinton Wine and Spirits? Correct. So, but that bottle of wine was unopened. Unopened. So she was apparently... She had been drinking prior. Where was she drinking at prior? Home. At home. She was not in any other establishment she in town. She was not. Okay. And it should be noted that this particular establishment is not one that we've had trouble with in the past. Um, I don't recall any past incidents that I've investigated or uh, the, the police department had investigated with this establishment. Okay. All set. Good. Any other questions for the sergeant? Um, no, Mr. Hurt took mine. Okay. All right. Uh, so unfortunately, we've had another incident like this in the recent past, and so I think we've, we've set up a bit of a process here to work through these. Um, typical, right, so last time we had, we had the, the police come in and talk about the report, board asked questions, and then what we decided to do was to, to schedule a hearing, 
where we would talk about the violation in a formal format, right? Because right now we can't take any action. Talk about the, the hearing in a formal format, have the, have the store owner in, have the police come back, and then make a decision as to what, if anything, um, the board would uh, uh, do in reaction to that. Does anybody want to do anything differently this time, or, or should we just plan to put this on the docket for the next meeting? No, I think that I think that that's a good course of action. Uh, the only thing I would add is the possibility of the board uh, considering basically going through the various types of violations, maybe with some help from our police department, and um, you know, trying to trying to consider ahead of time, you know, first offense, second offense, mm -hmm. hopefully not, but third offense. You know what exactly uh, are the ramifications of, of each of those, so that we have more or less a standard menu to go off of that we're not necessarily bound to, but saying this is going to be the minimum uh, that, that occurs. That yeah. Right, it's in the draft <coughs> policy, right? Okay. Um, anyone else want to do anything differently? I mean, this does reinforce in that in that policy having having some kind of standard uh, penalties. Yeah, I think just follow the policy, the draft the, policy. Okay, and follow. <laughs> okay, so will yes, sir. I just wanted to ask uh, uh, the folks from public safety. I mean, you know, now all of a sudden this has happened twice in the last, you know, five, six months, something like that. And we haven't had anything like this happen in town for years and years. Are, are the, is there anything that you see out there that, um, you know, has, has changed or uh, do we need to do anything differently when we're speaking with the license holders and, uh, I guess the regulations of, of who works there and the training and things like that. Is there anything we can do to help, you know, get get rid of this or, or try to avoid this in the future? Uh, absolutely. I think uh, as far as licensing goes, I mean, obviously they have to become uh, TIP certified. But what we offer at the police department is uh, bringing people in, helping them, training them, all the uh, licensees, and it, it, it's not a mandatory thing. It is more of a voluntary uh, system where they come in and we'll teach them to look out for certain things, certain warning signs, because, uh, you know, sometimes it is difficult to uh, determine intoxication or uh, an illegal ID or things of that nature. So it was uh, kind of disheartening. We, uh, two of my detectives that handled this got a lot of the information out to the public, but only uh, – Two or three licensees showed up, uh, and uh, the prior to that, the first year, I, I believe it was like five, five or six. So I'd like to see more of a showing, and maybe make that part of uh, the licensing process because the uh, detectives have great information above and beyond what you'd get from the, uh, the tips, and uh, I think it would be very helpful. And the people that go to these trainings and uh, educational sessions really come out with a with a different perspective on what to look for. Yeah. And as far as the increase, I just think it's uh, more of a due diligence on our part. And, uh, you know, uh, as far as someone's involved in an incident, uh, people like Sergeant, uh, supervisors like Sergeant Van Ralton and the officers on the street asking where was the last place that you were yeah. consumed uh, alcohol. And we're going to look into it and we're going to follow up on it. So, Mr. Kamalo, could you could you just verify uh, with town council that that is something that we would be able to uh, make obligatory for the liquor license holders uh, and and all of their employees? And you know, I'd like to see us assuming that that is some a restriction that we can put uh, on the license. I'd like to see us work with uh, the chief and see if it's something where we can set it up twice a year so that when they have new employees, they only you know, it's not going to be more than a couple of months or something before there's another course given or something to that effect. And it, does, it doesn't take long. It's uh, probably uh, less than an hour of class time. We hold it right up the, uh, the training room. And, uh, you know, our, our process was to do a little bit better job of getting the information out, actually going and knocking on doors and, and telling the licensees. But, if, I, I mean, that's one step we could take. But if we can make it part of the process. Yeah, and I don't mean to jump the gun. I know that all yeah. this would be, you know, There'd have to be a board discussion and things like that, but you know, just some ideas. Mr. Mosher. Chief, do you recall off the top of your head if this establishment participated in that training? No, not at the last one. Okay, thank you. Uh, do we need to, we don't need to take a vote, right? We can just refer this to a to a public hearing. So does yeah, go ahead, Mr. Kamala. Okay. 
All right, so why, why doesn't the chair entertain a motion to, um, to schedule a public hearing uh, to review the report of administrative violation by Hopkins and Wine Spirits and discuss any action there too? So moved. Second. second. Good. Good. Good enough? Okay, motion second for discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Vice President voting. That's unanimous. Okay, <laughs> so let's put, let's, if we can get that on the agenda for the next meeting, that'd be great. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Sergeant. Thank you. Appreciate it, Chief. Thanks, Sergeant. Liaison reports, board events and invites. Uh, board has three invitations uh, to us, a government ser ceremony, seminar rather, the BA Marathon Reef Ceremony and the Michael Lizno Center Annual Marathon Event. Uh, unfortunately, I'm traveling for some, most of those, but, um, but folks should be aware that they're invited if they wish to attend. I'm not sure there's anything we're compelled to go to. Um, let's go to liaison assignments. Mr. Sustar, you want to start? Nothing to report. Mr. Catino. Um, we uh, had a second meet of the uh, Tadaro um, Irvine property, and uh, we're making uh, good progress. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. Herr. We had another meeting of the Pratt uh, oh, right. Committee, Farm Committee, uh, whatever we're calling it these days. I can't quite get that in my head yet. Um, and at that meeting, um, and I thought we might see a letter tonight on it, uh, there was a request by the committee to come back to the Board of Selectmen seeking uh, additional funding, not a lot, a couple of thousand dollars, to do a preliminary study of wellhead possibilities on that land. The reason we need to do, so we're doing the beaver, we're dealing with the beaver activity right now, that's ongoing or that whole process is going, we haven't started the actual work yet. We're also then gonna be doing the wetlands, you know, and topography and all the other stuff that comes with the study uh, for the land itself. And then, and then we're going to, you know, start figuring out where we can site things. But we can't site things unless we figure out where the well is and the well's underneath. I mean, the water's underground, right? So we want to understand where the pot potential wellheads would be. And for that, Eric Carty, who's one of our members on the committee, has suggested if we get a couple of thousand dollars through the town manager and the DPW director's office, he can get one of, cons one of the consultants to come out and say, here's where the obvious places are. You know, without drilling holes and getting into a big twenty thousand dollar study, yeah. uh, but these are the obvious places you should probably stay away from. And once we figure out where they are, then we can begin the sighting of the other stuff and sort of massage our way through it. How are we doing with the scouts? Can you talk about that? Uh, so the scouts were there. Uh, we had some good dialogue with the scouts about uh, this was a concern, you know, as part of the process because this came up at a planning board meeting somehow. Um, so uh, I think the scouts, I know the scouts are eager to, to move forward as fast as they can. I think they understand that, you know, that really everything has to flow through the Pratt team first before we go out to the other boards because we might get ahead of ourselves a little bit uh, with the other boards and some of the concerns. If we follow the path I just described and we support that as a board, uh, figuring out where those wellheads are most likely going to be uh, or could be, um, that will help move the process along. They did cite a couple of dates that we need through this agreement that we signed as part of the PNS uh, that really put some pressure on us to do things within a year's time. Now, as much as I like to see Hopkinton be efficient and move quickly, uh, some of those dates have come and gone. So this thing was signed even before it went through town meeting or maybe right the day of town meeting, I'm not sure. But we've got a little bit of a challenge there uh, in terms of expectation. But we had a good discussion the other night. I think they recognize we're trying to move things forward, uh, but there are some dates out there that we're not going to be able to meet. Well, again, I, I think that we should just, you know, not to get in front of us too much, but the initial conditions were, remember, we always talked about putting them close to the road, right? right. For access, for security, right? Because they're going to have a building there. It's going to be empty all the time. Right. And also because, uh, you know, obviously if you put a well there, you kind of block up the entrance, right? Because it gets kind of narrow by the pond. Right. So the only point I'd make is, uh, you know, they've always had an expectation they're going to be toward the front of the property, somewhere in the vicinity of that pond, which, all, which also works because, again, it, it lets you get into the thing. So my only comment to that would be, we'd always anticipate the wells being pushed way far to the back. And, if you know, that that's study still, allows that, that would be great. Yeah, I understand. I think that we should, we should start drilling there <laughs> instead of starting the front because I think, you know, the, the, the plan has always been to leave that front. And this is what the scouts did, in fact, go into this with the expectation of, that, that the front they would have more access to. Right. Right. And, All and this again, it makes discussed. a ton of sense. We can't park them way back in that, in that back lot because it's just it, that. And it's a big cost place. adder too because of the road going Monster back, road, the power going back, the huge else. security issues, power lines. Yeah. So okay. Yes, sir. So Bye. we are on those issues, um, but we will. Uh, so if I could, Mr. Kamala, did you see a letter from our committee on that topic? Yes, I did through, through the chair and the team of administrative director. Okay, so we don't have to come to the board to take care of it. Perfect. He's got the money. 
Yeah, Brian, it, it doesn't uh, beaver trap in, in, end April 15th? So uh, that was discussed as well, and if that's the way they're going to do it, that's the way they're going to do it by the 15th, apparently. Um, Jennifer Burke is uh, kind of the lead staff person in that regard. Uh, I mentioned that it was April 1st or whatever when we had our meeting. She's like, I understand. We're working on it. So, and, and One more. Can we get a joint meeting between the Dadao Irvine with Yes, we, we heard there was a request for another meeting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, just so we don't double up on you. And I asked who the chair of that committee was. <laughs> Uh, we're not quite ready for that yet, but we're happy to do it. Uh, but we thought it was a little early in the process. Uh, we want to get a sort of general layout of what we think before we start going out to the community and no, we saying that, that, That's what we want to do that before we go out to the community also. Yeah, just so make sure that we're, not we're happy to do that, but I think we need a couple of months. Okay, good. Anything else? Mr. Mosier. Uh, the elementary school building committee is starting to really tighten up the uh, cost around the school and, and looking at the different adders and things they might need to take away. Uh, one of the things that is affecting the cost is the uh, groundwater levels on the property requiring uh, some extra elevation be added to the building. Um, that meeting is taking place now or took place earlier, so I couldn't attend it, but I will find out the details and, um, you know, I think... Uh, uh, Joe Markey is certainly keeping in mind um, cost, and I'll bring those details back to the board. And the bike parking lot's good to go? <laughs> the, bike, <laughs> the bike parking lot is good to go. For people that are anticipate driving to the school, there will be no parking places for cars, only bicycles. <laughs> what was that all about? That was an April Fool's Day. I, I, clever I looked town at manager it. that's going to have to look over like, his There's shoulder no for a long, long time. <laughs> uh, that's funny. <laughs> I go, this is going right. to be a nightmare. That was, that was all good. All right. Uh, let's see, from my side, um, let's see a couple things. Uh, first of all, the, the library construction fences are up as of today, so we're uh, officially underway. Nine Church Street is coming down later on this week, hopefully, uh, maybe as early as Thursday, depending on the weather. So um, that area is going to start to look a whole lot different very, very quickly as uh, progress gets made. So I think that's a great thing, and the community should be excited about that. And then the second thing I'd mention is um, I did attend a three, believe it or not, the 300th anniversary committee is still going strong in the 301st year, um, uh, trying to wrap up a few things. There's a final project they want to do that's going to make use of all the pictures that they took and, and other things they collected. And so that, um, that process goes on still. Uh, my only comment there would be if anybody has a really clever idea about some way to, to turn pictures into a work of art, electronic, anything, any sort of display, um, please feel free to reach out to them and give those ideas because they are working through this um, and, uh, and would love community input on, um, on what might be a great mechanism to display what they've collected. And, and again, probably in electronic format and some sort of dis uh, video display setup, but any and all details of that are, are uh, subject to further discussion. So please come forth if you have questions. And, um, and that's all I got. With that, it's over the town manager's report, Mr. Kamalo. And I noticed we got the Hopkins, yeah, they got the Woodville Rod and Gun Club folks. Tom, do you want to talk about this, or do we need them? Yeah. Um, <coughs> for a real introduction, we've, we've been in conversations with uh, uh, the Rod, Woodville Rod and Gun Club for a while now. Um, and before the board is a request to hold the fishing derby at the Park Farm Pond. Uh, this request has been discussed with the Park and Rec Commission. Uh, the goal uh, in those discussions was to find a way to at least make the event, which has been uh, sponsored by the, the gun club, uh, public. And so there were conditions that the Park and Rec Commission felt would meet that, 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 that expectation. Yep. Uh, namely, uh, the event was advertised, uh, and uh, on the day of the event, if members of the public show up, there will be a process for letting them in. Uh, and the issue is before the board because now the town owns the pond and we are seeking authorization from the board, from the board to let this event take place. So just mechanically, I'll cut you, I think, uh, do, do we have to approve this? It's a public parcel. They're members of the public. Why can't they just go on it and have their event? It's like a parade permit. Why am I getting in the way of this? But you know, but you can take, I could take 20 of us and go over picnic out there and not have to ask anybody's permission. This came to our attention, this came to our attention because yeah. it was a private entity, uh, right. a private event uh, on, on public. Well, I agree the private event part isn't, isn't acceptable. I completely understand that. 
But I think as long as they agree, let members of the public, well, again, I'm, I'll do whatever. I mean, uh, it doesn't seem worth the energy. You, did you have a comment to make? No, I, I'm supportive of trying to figure it out. I just want to make sure we don't have any liabilities or there's any other issues. Okay. Can we talk to liability? Yeah, we, we will address liability in the normal issue. In okay. the way where we will speak with the, with the club and make the necessary arrangements uh, to provide time for We may want to think about, much as we do with parade permits, because you just put this in my head, since we have all these parcels now, we may be doing things like this on a more regular basis to have a little kind of a standard private party permit or something. I don't know. Maybe that might solve things. Tom, do you have anything to add here? I mean, I don't think this is a no, hugely contentious is, issue. We're happy to do it. It's, you know, from 8 to 12 on Saturday. Yep. Uh, and, uh, you know, we go down the night before, just clean up a little brush in the grass and everything. It's good okay. for the town. You don't want all growing up anyways. Yeah. Everything up and uh, usually, and after the day over at 12, you know, Gary Turo runs it. He's a member of the club, and we give trophies out to other kids, and they all get prizes. It's usually by about 2 o'clock, all the kids are gone and everything. Sounds like a great good time. Okay, I got no issues. You've had you've held this for years, forever. Oh, Twenty plus years down yeah. there. So you know, we take the show, we cut the grass on the hayfield for packing and stuff yeah. like that. So it's okay. all, you know. Good. So, so <laughs> go ahead. I want this to happen. Yeah. But he's talking about bringing machinery to the land and doing stuff. I'm okay with that, but we the town needs to understand that that's what we're talking about. He's going to cut the grass. Right. Yeah. What? He's going to dig holes. What's he going to do? I mean. Grass and the brush on, not cutting any trees. Just I'm, I'm not arguing with you, Tom. I'm just pointing it out. This is all about liability right now, nothing else. Okay. Do you understand what I'm saying? I do. I completely understand what you're saying. It, we'll this is, you know what, we, we need a waiver. We need them to show evidence of insurability, and, and then we're all good. It's, it's fine. It's going to be all it's, it's all good. So we can get that done? Yes. Okay, yes. good. Just, we'll get that done. I'm all it's for all it. Fine. Does anybody else have any questions for anybody about this topic? Just want to give one more plug for it. What's that? You want to give one more plug? One more for the, plug what? for the event. Do you want to give one more? Plug? No, he doesn't want to plug it. It's for the Wood River on Gun Club. Oh, they're, just, okay. they're just opening it to the public because they because they're holding a public land. Okay. I don't think he wants to plug it, right? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> All right. Uh, Chair Linton, a motion to approve uh, subject to evidence of insurability and execution of a sufficient of a satisfactory waiver. Um, of liability for the Wood River and Gug Club to hold their fishing derby at Pratt Farm Pond on May 7th. So moved. Second. Further questions, discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Post President Funding, that's good. Tom, have a great, good time. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Okay, that's you. Have fun. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Enjoy it. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Can you go get back to me, Mo? Future board agenda items, Mr. Mosier. Better think of them quick. I have not. <laughs> Mr. Herr. None. Mr. Oh, Good, I do uh, have yes, one. sir. Go. Uh, to the chair of the town manager, um, recycling, single stream, where are we on that? Going on the budget for May 17th. It's, it's, it's what? <laughs> <laughs> Punt. <laughs> Which is April 26th, which I Could won't we be get, uh, an update on the Seriously, potential not sale of Old Town Liquor's Place? You skipping the last minute? Huh? What do you, Could we get an update on the status of potential sale on Old Town Liquor's? Ah, uh, yes. Anything else? No. Mr. Catino. Yeah, can we uh, uh, update on what we're doing about parking downtown, too? Get that right. That's going to be a long meeting. We should not under no, not budget for the time. Tuesday. People should show up on time. I am. Okay. Um, all right. I didn't know this was your last meeting. Uh, Would you, I, let's see, confirm you're in Costa Rica or not? Double check. You can't go to Costa Rica. You'd much rather be here. Mm -hmm. Zika. That's the, this is the week after school vacation. Yeah. <laughs> Monday, no, Tuesday yeah, the, the 26th. Place is a, the place is a death trap. Yeah, you don't want to go. <laughs> 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 you know, I take it to no. Syria. Yeah, I don't know. I can't find it. All right. Any in anticipation of you not being here? Do you have anything to say at your? Do you want to have any final <laughs> words? It's been fun. It's been fun. <laughs> All right. Good. With that, Chair Lanton, a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. What? Any further discussion? No. All in favor, say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Good night, everybody.